other Brian. I uh, couldn't be at the meeting, so I am the acting chair again today. Uh, Jill, 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 uh, for maybe with the summer doldrums are a little bit over and we are doing a little better on, uh, on attendance. Those who remember the summer months, remember them, you know, uh, will remember that we had a couple of meetings in which we couldn't get more today to do. Uh, so, uh, 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 Brian did send out, or Ryan, Brian, Ryan, I'll have to be careful not to confuse them. A agenda um, and uh, oops. Yeah, we just said. Oh, you got it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, can, I, can I add to the record that Ryan's doing an awesome job at whipping us into shape? There you go, Ryan. Thank you. <laughs> yes, you may add for the record. Trying. A grin for the camera. <laughs> Yes, we appreciate this, uh, Ryan, very much. Uh, so um, we have the re welcome review of the agenda. I want to minimize the preparation time and get to the open discussion and use as much as we can for the open discussion because we're really going to be under the gun here. We have three more meetings after this, and our report is not uh, yet, uh, not only not in final form, it's not really in completely in any kind of an issue form. So um, we really have to get uh, cracking in that uh, particular thing. I'm just saying that's the thing that I have the most uh, uh, concern about uh, with respect to the agenda. So um, uh, maybe I should use the, no, never mind, I'll do it. Wait a minute, Donna's going to leave. So I'm going to pull up the uh, next meeting date and time and agenda a subject uh, so that uh, Donna is uh, clearly going to be here uh, for that because um, she's one of the people along with um, Brian who uh, we've had the most difficulty in, in fitting in a very very busy schedule that um, they have uh, for that purpose. Um, I thought a little about what October ought to look like. Um, uh, I think it has to be a meeting in which we are getting to make um, a clear decisions on various kind of points. Um, um, and it uh, probably needs to be a longer meeting than three hours. Um, uh, remember, we used to do 12 to 4 or 5, whatever it was, uh, in, in an afternoon. And that was longer, of course, than uh, 9 to 12, which is only three hours. Um, and I'd like, if possible, to go back to a 12 to maybe even 5 just for October, because uh, I think that is a very critical meeting, and leave the agenda almost entirely about the report um, without uh, much else in it um, to do. Not that other things like preparing, for, of course, for the public meetings and that thing that important is, but that we're under the gun to get this done. So uh, let me ask, what is availability of people in October, if it were a one to five meeting. Uh, what particular day? I mean, 12 to five meeting, I'm sorry. What particular day? Mm -hmm. What day? Well, so that's what I just asked. I think what to consider as well is October 1st will be the Norwich public meeting, October 10th will be Manchester, and the 17th will be the Tech Jam. So maybe after the 17th. Yeah, or spend the day at the Tech Jam doing a meeting, I don't know. If people are going to be there otherwise, I don't know. I'm just trying to open it as to any possibilities that would get us that amount of time. So the answer, John, is when are you available? <laughs> <laughs> I am trying to, OK. Um, <clears throat> so I'm trying to now get down to half time in Boston. So um, I should be here, I could <clears throat> be here on the 4th. Um, not the 11th. Are we, are we thinking Fridays? I think we're looking at the second half of October, right? Or, yeah. Who, who can do Friday? 18th? 
who can, can people still do Friday? Is there somebody who can do Fridays? You cannot. That's what I You're thought. never going to be able to nice schedule to teach you. You're never going to find the whole house. You're a slave. Okay, that's what yeah. we just had <laughs> the last five years. But I was supposed to actually be off this at the end of the summer. This got instead. Yeah, so. I'm absolutely new to this. So I, my name is Jess Bittner, and I'm here um, on behalf of the Secretary of Commerce. Um, but I've served on a number of boards and written a number of reports. Is there a way that we could maybe cut down the meeting time by putting together a smaller group to go over the report that might be available? And then do a shorter meeting with everyone if that's, I mean, five hours is a long. Here's why the answer is more complicated. Oh. We haven't made any decisions. This is a right. decisional meeting, not a writing meeting. And a small group, uh, we have to get. I mean, the power of this group is all of the constituencies represented. But right. we have to get those people involved in the process. And that's what's proved to be very difficult. Right. Okay. <clears throat> so it is possible we could make decisions in under five hours. But I understand why it's a or, or you just the I think stuff that going to be a fair, once you get to the hard subjects around, particularly around regulation, there's going to be a fair amount of discussion. There should be. If there is any solution, we're not doing it right now. Uh, so, uh, so let's go back to see if we can do it, and then we look at alternatives. To, 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 to. Can I ask another question about on the schedule? Um, is it possible for you to ever call into a meeting for a portion of a Friday afternoon? Because if that's the case, then I would propose we pick like Friday, October 18th or 25th, because I can only come on a Friday on, the, on those two specific Fridays if you want me physically here. That's just the only thing possible for me. So in October, two Fridays uh, are your entire possible time. I could like come here all day from 8 in the morning till 9 at night if I had to, but I, I don't want to. But I'm just saying like that for me, it's very fun. And I don't know about other people. Well, maybe she could come on, you know, 5 in the afternoon till 9 at night. <laughs> <laughs> um, if, uh, if it's Friday still work for everyone but Donna, then I would say let's just do a Friday and Donna can call in. And, and for what it's worth, we have been kind of whittling away at pieces, so it's not like you know, it's not, it's not like you haven't had feedback anyway on all I think the regulation part is going to be the one where we're going to have to. Yeah, and, 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 and the rest of the things. And yeah. any of the whittling away was what became the core of the group because we never had a quorum for any of the discussion of that. And that's why, that's the concern that I was trying yeah. to get. Uh, yes, I could call in and then I could leave for an hour so that you didn't yeah. do mornings on Friday. I could call in for most of it. Ah, okay. So Friday morning, a longer meeting, starting a little earlier, maybe. And that, uh, <coughs> that, uh, I will make that work. What, what are the dates? 18th. How about the 18th from 10 to 3? No. Then, you, then we can stop. I'm on Sean. I'm out of town. 18th and 25th. Sorry about that. So, so targeting Friday means losing you. Yeah. For the 18th and 25th, unfortunately. Uh, and, and even the morning. What if we did the 11th? Huh? What about the 11th? The 11th? The 11th I could do. Do you have another meeting? So the 10th is going to be Manchester public meeting. That could be good. Well, unless, yeah, I guess. Yeah, that's okay with me. I don't care. I'll figure it out. You, oh, can't, I, you, you can't do the 11th. I'm going to Manchester. <laughs> I'm going to stay overnight in Manchester, so I would just have to figure out how long it takes to get back here in the morning. How long is it? Two and a half hours? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So like if I won't be here at night, sorry. The 11th may not work for me in the morning. In the morning, but in the afternoon? In the afternoon. Why don't we just do the afternoon and make life a little easier for people? Afternoon, Jane, is okay? Yeah, that's okay. All right, Donna, tell us about your afternoon availability. On the 11th, I cannot do it. I have a PhD defense, and that's what I've worked in for a long time. You but mean you won't give that up for <laughs> you can come torture us? <laughs> so the whole afternoon you're busy. Uh, well, they take at least three hours. I could call in after. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what what time are you on? I'm gonna let you guys decide, and I will call in. I am not from three to five, but I'm reading the other time by phone. I'll be in Boston. So the, on the tech gene, and that I kind of that that was an intriguing idea. There was a place for us to meet. Yeah, the tech jam, but uh, yeah, we're, we're going to run up against some limitations. So that's the 17th from 1 to 2.30. Uh, 
Uh, I don't know. Remember, these public meetings, uh, there's no requirement all of us be there. So that ma maximum attendance has never been the goal for these things. Uh, I can't go to White River, for example, even though I said I could. But I will drive to Manchester. But um, you can't hear it. For which meeting, you said John? At Tech Jam Day, I take it Brian still has the same problem. You're not going to be there for Tech Jam or anything on that day, right? No, I actually reserved that entire day for the AI task force so that I can go to the Tech Jam and just be there all day. Ah, the 17th. All right, let's explore the 17th. <laughs> I just think it's going to be hard for us to have a working meeting in that environment, especially if there's lots of members of the public who want to engage with us and then we're trying to make decisions and people are like us, like wanting to talk. No, no, no. I think the answer is that we find a site uh, somewhere nearby. We don't actually right. uh, have meet on meeting. stage before a massive crowd. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Okay, let's explore the 17th. I move we have beer. 17th? 17th? I can do the 7th. Not so good for me. Not so good means no. Wait, what time on 17th? Yeah. After or before? Yes. Okay. No. Hmm? Okay. Are we thinking after or before the talk? So John's talk would be 1 to 2.30. It's not John's talk. It right. is all of <laughs> It's a public forum. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, after that? After or before? What's better? Before, before or after? Before would be cool because then we could report to people on what we just did that day and say, like, this morning we decided these things. What do you think? And then they can react to it. How do you think they'd feel if we said, you know, we spent two hours talking about meeting times and we didn't come up with one? <laughs> <laughs> right. No. Yeah, I, I, uh, Don and I were talking before and a lot of you got here and I said, this will be the interesting part of the meeting. Yes. <laughs> The, uh, uh, so the, or the morning the or the afternoon? Let me go back to that question. The, could, we, could we do it the morning before? Works for me. Who could be there the morning? I certainly could be there the morning. So we don't, still don't have a, enough, though. Uh, wait a minute. The only person we locked was James in this screen. Right? No, Jill. Jill? Jill? Yeah. Jill? Jill? You're muted. Come back, Jill. I'm pushing all the buttons. <laughs> I will come. I will, I, I will come on the 17th whenever time you decide. OK. Morning of the 17th. Do we have a quorum, though? Uh, yeah, we've managed to say we're well over a quorum today. But uh, what, and what time are we talking? Um, 9 to 1.30. Okay, nine to I, uh, to me, of course. Oh, boy, whenever it's in the county, I, I can go as early as anybody else can, uh, anybody can, can do, it. and I'm usually detecting. Yeah, I've been functional by six, but uh, uh, nine thirty to one thirty is fine with me. Nine thirty to one thirty. Well, whatever our talk yeah. starts is. Well, our talk right? starts at yeah, at one. Okay. So nine to one is nine to one okay? Okay. And I have to leave in the early, early, but. <clears throat> Okay, yeah. nine to one. The All right, nine to one on the seventeenth. One. Can I just get a? Can I, everyone just raise their hands again for that? Can they can? Right. And Donna, you can do some telephone making. Okay. You can make it. So you can as well. I cannot make okay. it. I'm teaching three classes that day, but I will call in in between. Uh, or I will meet with somebody after and have them right. tell me what was. This is not a substitute for subcommittee action. I mean, I, that's a, kind of the answer to the. Uh, original discussion of this. This is all of us together. Okay, let me ask about another device. I'm looking for devices to make this happen. Yes. On the regulation piece, can I ask people who have a proposal with respect to regulation or have a firm position with respect to some regulation that has otherwise been raised to uh, uh, make it known in writing ahead of time? Now I'm not talking about the subcommittee. I'm talking about all those other people who are, might come in and say, I'm opposed to regulation. And the first you ever know about it is the 17th of October. I'm trying to get every, and, and I will go out and I will, with Ryan, uh, uh, try to talk to people who haven't been in this uh, process to get them to respond. I, I, I want to get people on the record uh, before any decisional point. 
It's the notion of regulation, right? We're not we're not talking no, about no. specific regulation. Let's say I say I don't believe we should have autonomous cars for safety concerns. I think we should redesign the transportation system, and we ought to say that in our report because this is a real opportunity. To, That's just an example. Yeah, uh, and you could say I'm opposed to that. Right. Well, it depends on what the reg so it depends on what the regulation is. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm trying but, to find yeah, ways. Your to get surname for the extreme libertarian position. I, or, or the extreme socialist position. <laughs> or whatever. No, I'm yeah. trying to get a. <laughs> I'm trying to get people on the record as participatory. Number one, and two, with some substance of what that particip participation is so that we can get the inclusion of everyone, even though everyone isn't showing up all the time. Is that OK? I will design the questions. Yes. Great. Or Brian will design the questions, and I'll tell him <laughs> what I think. <laughs> or whatever. OK, all right. All right, let's, let's go down back to the meetings. So we have one member of the public uh, with us today. Can he introduce himself? Well, you have 15 minutes on the agenda for uh, any public comment uh, to be made. But of course, you can just listen, and you might chime in later or whatever. But can you first introduce yourself? Sure. My name's Henry Amistadi. Uh, in September, I took an early retirement from the Mitre Corporation in Bedford, Massachusetts. Uh, I worked there for years, was involved in machine learning projects, was involved in a lot of uh, um, other projects indirectly because MITRE is involved in many, many AI projects. So I have a, a, a good background of six years in AI, uh, going to Open Data Science Conference every year since it started, and you know, a bunch of other uh, conferences and being Either they tend to fund you to go to all this stuff. So, um, so I'm here. Um, I have my company, Operations Monitoring and Analytics, does machine learning uh, around um, monitoring of building operations, data center operations, um, things like that. Uh, any kind of operations, really. And uh, I just want to get involved with things going on in Vermont. And, Lend a hand whenever I can. How about task force operations? <laughs> <laughs> well, as we, you can tell, if we, can, if we can monitor them, then we can analyze them. <laughs> but it'd be the ultimate tribute to uh, our artificial intelligence. The work is to say, well, we've come to the point in which the artificial intelligence can produce the report. Yeah, I also <laughs> have been doing a lot of, of reading in this area, and I don't, I don't know if you guys have like a book list of, of things that might be, might be useful, but you know, there's uh, some, some of the best ones are uh, Weapons of Math Destruction, uh, Super Intelligence, uh, uh, oh, I've got a whole collection. I, 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 uh, at least speaking for myself, your reading list would be good if you would send it to Ryan. That would sure. be nice. Yeah. Yeah. These are these are uh, the pop, popular yeah. books. Yeah. Here's Mark, so. Popular books in the field versus uh, more technical. Right. I, I have those too. <laughs> There's a lot of MITRE reports. And MITRE, by the way, is getting involved in the social impacts of artificial intelligence now, finally. So I take it you're not here to make comments so much as to listen and then uh, react to uh, where we're at. I need to get on the right page where you guys go with this because it's a broad, very broad field with very implications far beyond borders of Vermont. Yes, we understand that. So I, I, I failed to do one thing. It's because we've got uh, one new face. Now we have all, all the people that will be here is to go around and do introductions, um, which is always a good thing. For me. So uh, can we start with James? Sure. Hi, uh, James Lyle, I'm executive director with the ECLU Vermont. And I'm Jessica Ventura here on behalf of Secretary Curley. Okay. Now, can I ask a question? Are you likely to be here for the rest of the? Yes. Yes, so you're. I will be here, Desi, and also helping Ryan with any administrative work that the committee needs as well, since we're named in the legislation. 
Okay, great. Thank you. Because it, it, it's, 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 it's so much better if it's a, okay. if we have time to do it. Yes, no, I will be the, I will be the, um, the designee for the, um, for the secretary. And if you need, I've served on a number of boards and provided admin, so if there's anything I can help with. The, the first thing you might help with is that can you get her on the 17th to come and say hello to us? So I can. I actually live right around the corner from where Tech Jam is. Ah. Morning, so be there. <laughs> but can you get the secretary to come and uh, uh, at least meet and greet with Sure, yeah. No, she will be. I'm pretty sure she's planning on being there with the governor in the morning, so I'll see if she oh, can actually at least stop in. You guys got to get her game on. But I would be great to be able to brief her. Yeah, to, yeah. To, great. Yeah, if you ever need anything from the secretary, even from the governor's office, I also liaise on behalf of the agency to the governor's office as well, so I can be of any help. Uh, and a number of reports. And including pre agreement to anything we'll come up with? No more. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to be able to coordinate that, but I can certainly. I'm not sure all of you have met Ryan. Can you introduce yourself? Sure, yes. I'm Ryan Flanagan. I'm the administrative coordinator for the task force, so. If anyone has any questions, I can direct them to the right person. I do the meeting minutes and set up the public hearings as well. Donna Rizzo, I'm from the University of Vermont in civil and environmental engineering. I teach graduate classes in machine learning and AI. Joe Segali, representing the Vermont Agency of Transportation. I'm Mark Combs, I'm the Chief Technology Officer for the state. John Cohn, I'm with IBM, but I think I'm here for the Vermont Academy of Science and Engineering. I'm a AI person. I'm glad to have more. Uh, Brian Chena, um, I was appointed by the National Association of Social Workers as a social worker with experience in human rights and ethics, but I'm also a state representative. I'm Gene Santos. I'm a professor of computer engineering at Dartmouth College. I work in AI also. I'm John Dooley, a retired justice of the Supreme Court and acting chair today in the absence of Brian Breslin, who is normally the chair and gives his regrets for not being here. I think part of what happened is the last meeting he couldn't be here and we set this meeting without his participation. <laughs> and that's what ends up getting gaps in terms of uh, presence and he has a business Joe. meeting every morning, every Monday at this time. And then Joe, if you want to give an introduction. Hi, uh, my name is Jill Carson. I represent Labor. Uh, I happen to be now President Emeritus of the Vermont Day of the IL. Thank you. Okay, thank you all. Um, so we've got next uh, the preparations for the various upcoming events, and uh, I'll turn this over to Ryan. Again, uh, uh, I think um, we don't want to put too much time here and do as much as we can on the development of the report part today. So Ryan, on the various events. Sure. Let me just get this. Let me just get the slide. Okay, so we just passed, uh, we had to talk to the Secretary first when, before anything goes out to the public, but the Norwood public hearing is good now, and it's going to be 5.45 to 8, I believe, and we have to be out, let me just check my email again, I think we have to be out at a certain time. Let's see. Presumably not six. We need a better communications plan. We need to talk about getting rid of Yeah, hold on. So we used some time before all of you came, before we had a quorum, to talk about exactly that, what we have done so far to promote this one. Uh, and the answer is that now that we have Ryan, you, uh, uh, who's in the agency, um, He's going through the communication people in the agency, and they've sent out uh, press notices about this, right? And, yeah. And I was saying, from my experience with Lyndon, is you, we need some more personal work on this. So mm -hmm. I was recommending getting on the phone to the Valley News and talking to them and trying to get somebody to come. Yeah, and that can be done. Now that it's by the secretary, that's fine to do. I can talk to Nate a little bit more about it. He might have some contacts. But right now we're looking at 5.45 to 8 p.m. Uh, for the Norwich public hearing. They need the facility shut down by 8.30, so there's no there's gonna be a little bit of idling, you can talk a little bit, but just everyone needs to be out by 8.30, they said. Okay, 
Um, and uh, as much press as you can get out, sure. and I'm looking at everybody too who has uh, the tech people. Um, Brian has been effective of, of getting out the word to the local legislators, um, getting somebody to use. Uh, Front porch forum. Front porch forum. Do, yeah. do we have a? I, I guess I might have missed it. Is there some press release that's been drafted already that was sent out? Because I, I just heard people say that the depart, the agency did this, but I didn't see a press release unless I missed it. You said you saw one on. BT. My wife saw one on VT Digger. No, sent to me as a member of the task force, not to be like aggressive about it. But like, it, it might be out in the public. But I didn't. Did we get an email with something for us to share? Did I no, miss I can, that? I can send okay. that to you. Too. That's I didn't know that's like. What do you guys have done in the past? Yeah, like, yeah, the that would be helpful because okay. because I'm not monitoring the media looking for yeah. the press release of our group. I, I expect to be given that as a member of the task force, um, you know, to then be able to share as a member of the task force. So, and that's that's what we had done in the last one. So, what I will do is, if you send me that, I will send it to all the representatives in that area, um, including some on the New Hampshire side, and okay. then hopefully. They can put it on front porch form and and advertise for us. So sounds perfect. Thank yeah. You. Now I assume Monshire is got is a it's a, uh, I happened to see a program about them uh, in the last week, um, and uh, they are a very active, well going uh, museum with a large constituency, and I'm sure that they uh, will publicize it if they haven't already. That would be a good that would be a good source of information. I need to ask you because you're you live in that part of the world. Does the Tech Jam newsletter get out that way? That's a seven day program? Okay. Because that would be another avenue. Uh, yeah, no, it Kathy is. Kathy Resmer. Okay. I know it's up on their site right now. There's a little. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, is the Norwich site. one? Yeah. Is the Norwich one? For the Norwich one? Oh, no, the Tech Jam one is. Yeah, the Tech Jam one. Is. Kathy runs it, but I was just wondering if, if seven days works in the. Eastern part of the state. I don't yeah. think it probably is. As Were you answering on the Mantra Museum website? Yeah, that's what I was just that. trying to figure out. Is <laughs> we, I was just trying to figure out if, if stuff in the eastern part of the state, if they, if anyone would. Seven days so. covers Mantra. Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah or eastern Vermont. Yeah, I can see about that. Well, they, she's usually very. She's a big supporter of anything we do. So Kathy Resmer. Yeah, it's seven days. She, she's the tech jam person that you and I were talking. She's awesome. Yeah, and definitely follow up on the Put that in the ring. Yeah. They, do, yeah. The <laughs> they send out a lot of information. Yeah, and when you get a chance, follow up with you, and she can also put you uh, in touch with all of uh, the communications person at the Dartmouth level also. Okay. Sounds good. Do we know if Ryan Breslin is going, going to that one? I can check on the doodle poll. I know that he is faded in those. Yeah, you definitely. Yeah. <laughs> I'm disappointed I can't make that one. Yeah, yeah well, I am too. Brian will be attending that one. Okay. So the, the typical thing is, who's ever the presiding gives a, uh, a bit of an overview of who we are and what we're doing, and, uh, uh, it, and it's primarily public comment. There have been, uh, Donna, did you give a, did, somebody gave a little more substantive orientation? I did with the Linden thing. Because you weren't there. I didn't do it as well, but... I'm sure you did. Yeah. But so, John, or, or, or if that's if one of them is willing to do that, it's only five or ten minutes. Remember, you've got over two hours. So that's always useful. And then, of course, the primary thing is get people talking as many as you can in many ways as you can. Well, I think when, we, when it's time to talk about the substance of that, I think the public would want us to do just a little bit more to say where we are. So and not just, hey, this is what we've been doing, but... I think at least my, are we ready to talk about that? My, okay, so my, my thought would be, it's scary because we aren't far enough along, but maybe that'll kick us into gear. But I hope you don't use those exact words. I was gonna say, yeah, we're terrified. <laughs> but I think if we, that the public would probably wanna know what, you know, the, the rough readout areas that we're expecting and, and sort of where we're leaning. I don't know if that's appropriate, but I think that if, I, if anyone is out there watching what we're doing, which I'm not sure they are, they would say, hey, you've been at this for a while. You know, I, I think this would be an opportunity to say, you know, 
here's here's where we're kind of landing, and then let people comment. You know, to be able to frame it as cement still wet. You know, we're looking for input, but here's what's jelly. Because I think if we just come back, because uh, last Tech Jam was before we kicked off, right? But there was some notion. I, we Did you just start started. Tech Jam. Now what you're talking about knowledge. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I think it both. <laughs> it both. I think that at this point, at this juncture, we should this far into it when we're in the public, we should talk about a little bit about our our jelly ideas. Well, it's more They're possible at Tech Jam because we have just spent the morning trying to. Uh, but even do at that. Should, uh, even even at Norwich, should we should we have some part that sort of goes a little bit further, or no? Is it all input? Any input? We ended up in the same place at Linden, but it was maybe because it was legislators that were there. But that's exactly what happened. That we, it kind of evolved to where we were heading, but we didn't okay. state things up front. But I really do think it matters yeah. the group of people that are there. Because and people want to know. You're right. Yeah. These people were more interested in exactly what could we do, whereas yeah. when we were in like the Burlington meeting, they wanted to talk. people yeah. were more yeah. telling us what their fears were. <laughs> so where are we headed? <laughs> Look at me. I'm, I'm actually not bringing my hand. I mean, other than uh, the recommendation for a commission, I'm okay. not sure. So my reaction to what you just said is the group in going to Norwich um, uh, should decide whether the extent to the, whether they want to do that. That is your last point, John. That is uh, give uh, a kind of weather report on what uh, where the group is going. Um, so what I'm going to do is ask, tell Brian about this and let him get in touch with the people that are, are going um, to, to uh, at least communicate by in Slack or email or whatever on that question and decide on how to do it. Uh, uh, it's true, I think, what Donna said in Linden is that as you start going in a subject like this, some of the people will give uh, informed and detailed reactions to what they think they ought to do. But they're a minority. The majority of people come and ask you questions back, uh, as well as uh, trying to give you some sense of, of where they are. Um, and the questions are obvious are often uh, coming out of concern. You know, what, what, what will protect my privacy if this is the way it's going to go if we do whatever. Um, and so it gets to be somewhat interactive, and during that interactive part, you do get some uh, from members saying well, at least what individuals are thinking about where they're going to. And that, I thought, worked pretty well. Works pretty well. This one's also going to be recorded, right? Yeah, they're each recorded. Yeah. Okay. You're going to arrange that. Are you going to arrange that live? Yeah, you're in a technology hub, so. And if you can get video of the smiling faces of all the people, that would even be better. Perfect. I will do that. The easiest way to record anyway. Yeah. So what I, what I reach out, I would not reach out to or I reach out to someone else. In like the Upper Valley area, Vermont share. I don't know. See if we have a camera on the staff, like at ACC. Sure. And we yeah. just own the sure. video and then post it to YouTube maybe or something. We will do. OK. Uh, just, just wait, who's showing for the launch one? I mean, I will be there. Give me the. Yeah, so, Monster meeting. Hold on. What's the it time? looks like it's going to be 545 to 8, and then we need to be out of the building by 830. Yeah, we'll get back. Who's showing? <laughs> uh, it'll be Brian, <laughs> Resland, Gene, Joe, and yourself. Ah, and, yeah. I just, and I just backed out, but Gene is taking my place. Oh no, he's there twice. I tried. <laughs> and that's October first, five forty-five to, to eight. Yeah. Can anybody else go? Mark. I have to look at my kid's soccer schedule. Yeah, I see what your priorities like. Well. He's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If he, James, it's more of a driving sure. problem than a parenting oh, problem. Nice. Oh, I think I'm going. Uh, let's see. I have you for the third. So what, when you vote in the poll? Oh, when I vote in the poll? At the first word, you're welcome to come. I think I should do that. First? First. Okay. Good. 
All right, so you've got three or four people anyway, so you, I think that's enough. That's typically what it's been. So it's gonna, there's a good chance I'll be able to go by just any confirmed yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. This one should be pretty well attended, I would think. I hope so. I hope it'd be like Burlington, which is a gold standard so far. <laughs> Uh, but we knew that it was going to be tough in the summer and, and in the least popular, it's a dense part, but I think it was good to do it. Particularly when you get the appropriations shares there, thanks to Brian. Um, so uh, now on to Manchester, the 10th. The time is what? Let me pull that up. So the time for that one was going to be 4.45 to 7. And then afterwards, I'm not sure if anyone wants to go, town manager invited us uh, to see the uh, Burn Bird Academy game versus Mount Anthony. <laughs> Both would come. I, I was willing to go for yeah, a little bit until, and well, no, they, they said like if it would come that they would want to have, have one of us or some of us speak a little bit on their, about AI or something. I'd be willing to do that, but I can't commit to watching an entire Sports game. Yeah, I can't yeah. physically. This is football. An entire sports game, but I'm willing to show up. <laughs> I, I, it's, it, yeah, it's hard for me to imagine that somebody who goes to a football game or is a participant in the sport wants to hear a lot about AI. But I'm at the same time. It was the field that they installed the AI training system. Oh. Ah, okay. Yeah. 4:45. What's, what's the address of that? The address. I think I have it. I th and what they were asking, I believe, was if someone would just briefly speak, uh, with go up and speak with the newscaster about the work of the task force briefly. I think that's what your email said. And yeah. so if there's no one else who can stay for that, I'm willing to suck it up and sit through the game <laughs> and get up and be like, here's what the task force is doing. See our information at this place online. And you know, it would be a brief explanation and then I would hang out a little longer. But I can't just sit through an entire football game. And you'll okay. have to do that. Yeah. All right. So uh, now I'm coming home. So this is uh, 7 p.m. is already late. And yeah, driving all the way to Manchester is a large thing. So yeah, I can send it to you. Who else right. is going? To Who else is going? Who's going to Manchester? Well, I'm glad I'm going. Then. Just three of us going to Manchester. Okay. Um, I knew it was limited, and that's why I made a commitment to do it. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, remind us, this is uh, by invitation of a business there. What is? Give me the background again on it. For Manchester, yeah. And also, what I wanted to say, let me just get it up first, is I think Trey's going to be attending that meeting as well. Oh, good. Oh, good. good. Yeah. Yeah. That's near him, right? It is. Yep. Yes. And, and uh, I like that because we need to get him more involved. I mean, he's the one who's had the most trouble coming all the way to Montpelier for meetings. And so yeah. uh, we want him to get involved at the end here. Uh, OK, uh, now remind us the location and the affiliation. Uh, what mm -hmm. caused the Manchester uh, one? It was by invitation. Yeah, so for the Manchester public meeting, Mike Cole of Vermont STEM Corps reached out to me just Telling us about his project, which was an autonomous streaming system for the games. It uses certain algorithms, and then it can, depending if it's soccer or this or that, it will record the game. So he reached out to me. He was just interested, asking me a few questions. And then he mentioned as well that their town manager, John O'Keefe, uh, would love to have us for a public hearing. Uh, so then after that, I talked to John and John's willing to send it out to the schools and invite them. Brian's sending it out to legislative people. So I think it should be well attended as well. OK, we should give notice on VT Digger. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got a Bennington paper. You probably have a Manchester Weekly. Mm -hmm. Again, we should try to get the local papers in sure. to this. And, and front porch forum would be great. Yeah, so likewise for the other one, when you have a press release ready, if you would send it out to the group, yeah. I, I'm happy to forward it to legislators and other people in that in that community down there that I know and ask them all to post it on Front Porch Forum because then it, that's what happened in um, the Northeast Kingdom and even though a lot of people didn't come, a lot of people heard about it. I, I, I would expect that for these two we're going to have more people show up just because of the, the nature of them so that would be great. Is there a way for um, people to submit comments online as well? Like a, if you want to, you can 
can't show up, you can submit your comments and then we track them or not? We have asked, we've gotten some, right, oh. that, have come, that have come in, uh, uh, but I don't know the specifics of how. I like the idea, though, of maybe what we do is once the, we have a draft report ready, maybe we have a public comment period where we advertise that from like November 1st until December 1st or whatever, there's a public comment period where, and we encourage people to send comment in because the state does that for other things. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just easier to, maybe yeah. at the yeah. bottom of the press release, just say, like, if you can't show up in person, but want to submit yeah. a comment. I think know. it might say that. Oh, okay. Well, if you use the Linden press release, it gave contacts, um, but didn't have a, a way of. Yeah, for more information, submit comments. Yeah, I think for more information, you could contact and you can send other comments, I believe. Uh, that was at the bottom of the press uh, release, but they weren't online or anything. It was just a, another way. Uh, making comments and writing. Uh, also would help is if you sent us out some more about Vermont's temp course so that we all knew sure. what it was and so when we came we were uh, informed about that. Okay. So there must be some literature or something you've got. Or you I know I sent out an article earlier about uh, their system and I know Brian sent out as well but I can find a link to their okay, site. I don't more. remember that but that's um, uh, doing it again would be helpful sure. to us. All right, anything else about Manchester? Uh, we've talked now about Tech Jam considerably. Now, Tech Jam is one in which, uh, is there a different expectation, John Cohn, you're the one who's been um, talking with them, than a normal public uh, hearing? Just what I was brought up in the context of the other ones is that I think that the, there are a couple of people who've been paying attention to what we've been doing or, or, or expecting something, so I think that we should lean a little bit more into what we're, where we're heading for recommendations with the idea of getting comment. So I think it shouldn't just be, here's why we were founded almost a year ago, what do you think? We should say, here's what we've done and here's where we're thinking and allow people to help us agree with that. Yeah. I don't think we have to, yeah. Yeah, I would, just, I would say there's some areas where there is agreement if we look at over what we did. So just being clear, like, we've come to these conclusions, and in these areas, we're still, you know, because then that gives people a real meaningful chance to influence our decision, because then they can weigh in. Yeah. Um, and also, people still have the chance if we've come to, if we've yeah. come to agreement, but people disagree, it still gives them a chance. That's a perfect time, yeah. but then they, then they can actually comment on that. Yeah. I mean, I think we have some concrete stuff, you know, we're talking about an ongoing presence, we're talking about an ethics document that is rooted in other, you know, eth you know, in, into the, the EU stuff for now, but to follow. Uh, but I think that there's some more, you know, technical stuff that we would want to hit on, and like you said, and, and then let them say, yeah, or no, you know, that's what we yeah. want. So I think, can we say it would be part of the meeting that we've now set for nine, is that what we said? Yeah. Um, and and it, well, occasion at the end of that to choose somebody to be uh, the speaker of that yeah. uh, and then try to get a little bit at least of consensus as to what will be said. Is that all right? Yeah, but I think we better I be well prepared. We better be prepared before that day for an outline. I mean, I think we can wing it from four bullet points. I, I'm more concerned about, and maybe hopefully we get some time today yeah. in the free discussion to sort of start framing that. So we don't have to say, here's our ethics documents. We're saying, here's what we're going to do about it. So I don't think it, I, I don't think we would, we would be well served to try to, you know, come into that morning meeting with a blank sheet and say, what are we gonna say, tell them. Uh, no, I'm not, I'm okay. not saying that. Oh, yeah. you mean? Uh, I think we ought to be better prepared than that. Yeah. Well, the meeting today will get us to as far okay. as it will yeah. get us. I'm that's 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 today the would be yeah. okay. And hopefully, a little, yeah, go ahead. Plus, whatever comes up, whatever is done in that morning meeting. I'm, I'm trying to get the content from the morning meeting, yeah. and maybe uh, the, which, which may be more specific into the afternoon presentation. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Uh, anything else we should know about that? It looked like you were well, I did. Like, I just really like this idea and not to go in, even if things are decided on the morning of that meeting, to not necessarily 
give too much detail. I, I understand that. Yeah. that there is a risk where here. We're going. It gives them a more so, concrete place to provide feedback on their concerns. Uh, just yes. and, and and I think that the form is quite different. So this is um, Tech Jam gets a lot of people there. So if you thought. You remember at, at the yeah. generator thing, I was like, oh man, it was kind of quiet and stuff like that. You guys were all like, oh no, there were a lot of people. Uh, last year at Tech Jam, Joe, how long was that panel? Was it an hour or an hour and a half? Last year's was well, it, easily an hour and a half. It was, it was left yeah. And so, so we had a lot of people. It was a rowdy crowd, yep. uh, really yeah. great opinions. A rowdy crowd. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah, there were a couple of people who had a really <laughs> st strong <laughs> acts. There were a couple of people who had inappropriate, you know, like, were, do you remember that woman who was trying to make it about her job? And, yeah. Oh my God. Uh, but it, not, in a, not in a productive, it not in a shirt. It more how I thought Burlington was going to be, but the people at Burlington had really had why they were so impressed? Okay, so it was more so reactionary. Really, no. They no, just had thought yeah. long and hard, or had careers that involved yeah. AI yeah. and had seen I, issues. I dare to see it would be a packed room different group. with what there were, must have been over 100, 150, oh, 100 people, yeah. something like that, and that we will have to shut it down at the end. So uh, we better be prepared. There's nothing in competition with it. I don't know what the agenda of Tech Jam looks like. I didn't go. Five years. Is it so? This is the activity at that time, and the only activity in uh, Tech Jam. No, probably not. I mean, there's free candy downstairs, so we're uh -huh. definitely competing. Oh, I did yes. And robots, yes. candy and robots. So, but I, I have a sense that there's enough public interest in this, okay. and All since right. Kathy is real, is the organizer of Tech Jam, and is, this will get well boosted, and. It'll be fun. I think it'll be yeah. fun and rowdy. It'll be a nice finale. Yeah. So, That's so, so that being said, I'm wondering if, 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 if we might use our time today to, like, and I don't know exactly how we use it, but use our time today in a way that sets us up for these upcoming meetings in terms of like clarifying what are some areas of agreement that we can definitively report on and what remains to be worked on. And we may not resolve that stuff today because of the time limits, and so we just make it that at our tech jam meeting, that's what we focus on. Because what, what I'm... What I want to be cautious about is I feel like sometimes we, we, keep, we repeat, our conversation is repeating ourselves. Like if people are like summarizing what we did over and over and over during our time, but I don't think we need to do that anymore. We need to just be like, what do we agree on? What don't we? And let's work that out or document the disagreement. Um, that's where I think we're at. It's like okay. really nice. I, I, I was about to uh, turn us into exactly that discussion. Uh, Great. Uh, <laughs> I just want to be sure that there's nothing more to say about any of these uh, three public meetings. Hearing nothing and giving you at least 10 seconds to react. Uh, I'm yeah. excited. <laughs> this is great. Let's go into it. So, In public meetings. Uh, here's where I understand we are on the development of the report. Yeah. We have um, three parts of the report uh, that uh, we have a subcommittee or a person working on. Uh, remember, here's what the the a report is, and I'll, I'll just read this quickly because they're short. Uh, part one, a summary of the current development and use of artificial intelligence. I'm, not, I'm going to work on that, but that's more just here's what the facts are uh, and not a place where we need uh, to agree or not on a recommendation. A proposal of definition of artificial intelligence if needed. We've gotten to a point, I think, where we're reasonably comfortable in the one we're using, uh, but in any event, that's not the highest priority. And then the three most difficult ones. A proposal for state regulation of artificial intelligence, if needed. A, a proposal for the responsible and ethical development of artificial intelligence in the state, including an identification of potential risks and benefits from that development, and a recommendation on whether the General Assembly should establish a permanent commission to start, uh, study the artificial intelligence field. The latter, parent five, uh, I've been working on, I have more detail into what I suggest we say there in a memo I did yesterday or the day before and then but sent to you yesterday and there are copies of that around and we should discuss that. But the ones that, uh, that's the furthest along in any event, the ones, uh, the next furthest along is a proposal for the responsible and ethical development of artificial uh, intelligence uh, which is turned into uh, among the people who have talked about this before is the uh, uh, acceptance and um, 
promotion of an ethics code. Um, and then the more difficult one for which there was a subcommittee established after the last meeting that I guess met then in May, a proposal for state regulation of artificial intelligence if needed. Uh, one other thing I would say is that uh, there are other parts of the legislation that um, suggest other things that we should report on. And, the one, and we went through a little discussion of that. I also did a memo on that. We went through a little discussion of that. And the one that people seemed to want to report on was um, whether uh, there should be state promotion of artificial intelligence as an economic opportunity in Vermont um, and what kinds of things the state ought to consider for purposes of encouraging, supporting, or even subsidizing that. So uh, that would actually be, in essence, a sixth uh, part of the report, but it's not in the section of the legislation that gives you the parts of the report, so I think we've got to deal with these first and then uh, go into that. Now, is everybody satisfied with that summary of where we are? Yeah. Okay. Uh, again, I wouldn't do mine first. Uh, let's see if we can help get a report of where we are in ethics because this subject, uh, I don't think, ever was at a quorum. Nothing was, uh, was at a quorum meeting, and what had at, at where we were before and what we need to do to bring that to conclusion. So I don't remember who's, but I, Brian was the leader, I think, of this one. Can, can I ask a, uh, like a logistical question? Is there a way I can access the internet in this building? Because because <laughs> yeah. I can never get it to work, and so it's like always stressful and hard for me to access things, but I'll try again, maybe today. It'll okay. Uh, we have a techie person who is here, uh, uh, by the way, at the call start of the meeting, <laughs> and went back upstairs. Uh, well, this who, the past year, the help of this. No, the SOV public Wi Fi is working, and it just hasn't yeah, worked. Yeah, it, it, it is working now. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm using the NC line. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay let's see. Because it'll take me one, like, literally seconds if it works. Usually, when I try to use it, see, it says you're not connected to the internet. Okay, you're on the ethical. You're on the ethics, this is for N4, right? You're on the ethics subject you're doing this for, Brian, right? I just want to be sure oh, that we're on. Just do Google. Yeah, that is. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Go here, do me a favor. I think you have. Go on where? Go, uh, turn it back on. Go, forget this now. I think you have bad credentials. Go, uh, go. Crafted and uh, Donna did some edits on a uh, at least a one page summary. I think it was one pages, right? I yeah, think it fit one I thought it was a really nice. Yeah, I liked it. Yeah, it's on Slack, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 And so for everybody, yes, on the ethics piece. I think I, yeah. I think actually I printed out a piece of that. But everything got thrown up on the got corrupt, and so everything's out of order. So finding anything is now. <laughs> so if, if I can't get it on my computer, I mean, if someone else who has access oh, and has the document could pull it up, I'd be happy to review it. Printed it out somewhere. Um, here, wait. What, uh, do you just want to read it? Yeah, and just like review it for people, or maybe like I could review it and then someone could forward it to the group if it hasn't happened yet. Did we forward it? We put it up, but we have it. I have it. Uh, what's the best way to get it? Or do you want me to read it out? I could sing it. How about you sing it and I'll interpret a dance to it? Okay, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. I always say that. Um, I'm ready. Did you wait? It didn't work. I'm, I give up. I give up. Like, there we just go. Use yours. I, are you, I, I was going to act it out as you read it. Okay. Vermont Code of Ethics for Artificial Intelligence proposal. Okay. <laughs> Fundamental rights. Human dignity. AI technology should be developed such that it respects, such that they respect, serves, serve and protect human personal and cultural sense of identity, physical and mental integrity, and satisfaction of basic needs. Individual freedom. 
Humans should have freedom to make life decisions for themselves without sovereign intrusion, except to ensure that individuals or people at risk of exclusion have equal right to AI's benefits and opportunities. Respect for democracy, justice, and law. AI systems should serve to maintain and promote democratic processes to honor the rule of law and to respect the values and life choices of individuals. Have you ever thought of a career in politics? Equality. I not just summarized what the EU did. I, know, I didn't I make this up. All right. No, it's great. I'm just, it's <laughs> equality, <laughs> non discrimination, and solidarity. Equal respect for the moral worth and dignity of all human beings must be ensured by development of AI systems whose operations cannot generate unfairly biased outputs. Citizens' rights. AI technology shall not infringe upon the wide array of citizens' rights, including the right to vote, the right to good administration or access to public documents, and the right to petition the administration. So those are the fundamental rights. Human dignity, individual freedom, respect for democracy, justice, and law, equality, non-discrimination, and solidarity, and citizens' rights. So then, yeah, so then there's a section on principles um, that underlie these rights. Um, respect for human autonomy, prevention of harm, fairness, and explicability. And there's a one-sentence explanation for each of those. So for respect for human autonomy, humans interacting with AI systems must be able to keep full and effective self-determination over themselves and be able to partake in the democratic process. Prevention of harm. AI systems should neither cause nor exacerbate harm or otherwise adversely affect human beings, the natural environment, and all living beings. Fairness. The develop I just thought like maybe someday we'd need to add and other machines, but maybe we're not there yet. Um, fairness, the development, deployment, and use of AI systems must be fair, ensuring equal and just distribution of both benefits and costs, and ensuring that individuals and groups are free from unfair bias, discrimination, and stigmatization. Explic explicability. AI processes ne need to be transparent. The abilities and purpose of AI systems openly communicated, and decisions, to the extent possible, explainable to those directly and indirectly affected. So those are the four principles. And then there's requirements um, of AI. Do you want to read that section? Sure. This is like, it feels like a Pesach for a Passover. You, you pass. Yeah, exactly. That's <laughs> right. Parts of AI. Human, uh, requirements. Human agency and oversight, including fundamental rights, human agency, and human oversight. That doesn't... Not a complete sentence. Yeah, these are just, these oh, are yeah. these, these are, are um, it, they're not focus complete areas. Sentences. Okay, yeah. Technical robustness and safety, including resilience to attack and security, fallback plan, general safety, uh, uh, accuracy, reliability, and re reproducibility. Privacy and data governance, including respect for privacy, quality, and integrity of data and access to data. Transparency, including traceability, explainability, and communication. Diversity, non-discrimination, and fairness, including the avoidance of unfair bias, accessibility, and universal design, and stakeholder participation. Societal and environmental well-being, including sustainability and environmental friendliness. Social impact, society, and democracy. And accountability, including auditability, minimization, and reporting of negative impact trade-offs and redress. And so just in closing on this piece, this is a summary that was created from a model code of ethics from the European Union. And that, that document was like 40 pages long with lots of information and it had like 60, and I'm, used, I'm throwing numbers out there, these don't quote me general public watching, like, but like 60 something references, you know, guiding that. So what, we're, what we really have done is we've decided to use the European Code of Ethics as our foundation and to summarize their work into a one page simple document so that so so so, um, so that it's clearer but that if people wanted to dig into this um, and as we build our online um, archive of our work it'll be easier for people to do this if people want to dig in you can look at the source of this and the source of that source um, because this is we are not reinventing the wheel. We're basing our, our, our work on global efforts to come up with um, ethics around the development of AI. So uh, I really appreciate you doing this. Uh, three, com three quick comments. One is that that comment about we are basing this on the evolving state around the EU, I think should go up front. So somebody doesn't go through it and go, who are these guys? What yeah. are they? That was the so, suggestion I made in the yeah. email. I, I, I just yeah. said, let's look at that. Put that on top. I think the idea is that 
you know, we're doing this because that's the best laid out thing. And as our country converges, we would do, you know, we would want to stay alive or even lead. I would, I would like to say in the brave little state thing. And three, I would say that in this standing committee, it will be the, their role to track and influence, track and influence this as it goes forward. Do you standing think commission, you mean? Standing, whatever. Yeah, okay. Those uh, uh, Those uh, what I've never totally understood, and maybe um, it's because we haven't discussed it or whatever it is, exactly what is the significance of this code of ethics? Is this aspirational? Um, it is it apply to development of AI by only in Vermont, or is it uh, AI that's developed anywhere and is used in Vermont uh, in some kind of application or whatever? Um, is there any regulatory uh, command from this code of ethics? Uh, if it is, what is that regulatory command? Is it so? Uh, some of these things, of course, like transparencies, are uh, nobody shall use AI that isn't for which the algorithm and method of machine learning is not transparent, or whatever you want to say, just to whatever that is. Um, uh, that would be a command that you want. AI to have these features, but you don't make it a command is a, is another thing. Uh, uh, codes of ethics are things that come typically in regulations of professionals. Um, so I think actually uh, uh, maybe I think social workers have a code of ethics. Lawyers will you have a code of ethics. Engineers. Uh, engineers have a code of ethics. They you do. can lose your license to do things uh, if you don't abide by it or yeah. found to have, have done that. Um, that would make sense as to somebody who is uh, creating an AI application in Vermont. It wouldn't make as much sense for somebody who's simply uh, done an AI application which is now being used in Vermont since I don't know how you would have any jurisdiction over the maker or anything. Uh, so I'm more caught up with the, what is the actual real world significance of a code of ethics? Well, who do they apply to, you mean, or is it? Yeah. Well, it's all those things. Who do they apply to, but what is their force? What, what comes of it? Uh, uh, yeah. So, so, and then I'm curious as to, like, you know, given your background, what your thoughts are, because, you know, we have a Bill of Rights within the state. We've got a Federal Bill of Rights. We've got a State Bill of Rights. Is there a need to normalize the impact or consider the impact of AI to amend our State Bill of Rights? Is that what we're... Now, you know, you're talking about the Constitution? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, states... But, wow. I mean, it's just a thought. No, I'm not saying that we would, you know, make that recommendation here within this committee, but maybe a, a code of ethics is a starting point for a conversation that could lead that way is kind of what my thought is, right? Like, once this commission is... Our study commission is over, we're going to recommend that other people take up more actionable, you know, avenues of this. And one of them may be like, you know, what, you know, what do we need to do constitutionally to consider AI? Um, so a, a constitution, of course, is a very, very, very difficult thing to. Imagine. I know that's why I that's uh, why I, I never, never said it. You until might until today, uh, in the line you're going, you might say this. I mean, this is a way to answer the, some of the questions we did, is, which is the, the task force recommends that the Vermont General Assembly adopt this code of ethics uh, that we have described here uh, and implement it by appropriate legislation that it decides uh, is necessary for implementation, period. Mm -hmm. that, and that way, the code of ethics sort of becomes the moral standard and the philosophical and policy standard for what legislation might be. Uh, that's its real effect. Donna was trying to say something. Mm -hmm. I'm more OK with this direction. I like it. But I was viewing this, and maybe it is because in civil, environmental engineering, we have a code of ethics. We have a, it doesn't, we're trying to get it to spill over into mechanical and electrical engineering, but I mean civil engineering because people's lives are at risk right. when you build something, you've had this, and it, it attracts people that are very aware of that. And that's more my reason for doing this right now. I hope it will evolve to making more but that wasn't my understanding. So professional regulation should be part of it. 
ready? It, it could evolve to professional regulation, but we in civil engineering, it's, there isn't um, regulations. There's just, a, to me, I want it to attract the companies that want to come to Vermont. I want them to have this, uh, you know, philosophical, I, we can't stop or regulate the AI that's going to happen <laughs> everywhere in the country and impact Vermont. It was more, I hate to use the word marketing, but it, uh, I, is there a better word? Well, I, it's so, you know, one, one of the things that isn't coming out as strongly in the, in the sort of proto-recommendations as I'd like is around education. And I think that these codes of ethics are as much education as yes. that when we train people, whether they're coming through a university, or high schools or universities, whether they're incorporating in our state, whether they're trying to do business here, is that by having the conversation about something like that, you start to have people think. So, for example, and I think you know, there's been lots of debate on on professional certification. I think there's the hammer and the stick, right? You know, you can you can put censure, you know, if somebody violates this. But the real thing is is to get people to think about it. I mean, like the 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 uh, unintended consequences of technology choices is something that's never taught really. And if you just have the conversation to say, here's the code of ethics, you know, congratulations, you're pra able to practice in the state, read this. I mean, just by having that conversation, you exactly. introduce the thought. So I think that there's an active part of education in writing these, these guidelines. And they're not so much, you know, there's no punitive, there's no teeth in them, but by explaining to people like, oh, I hadn't thought about that. Things like fairness happen, fairness problems happen because not because somebody is intentionally trying to be unfair, it's because they never thought of it. So I think these things can be very effective. And, and sorry, it's just that we now require UVM, we require students to take ethics if they're going into computer science. And it's more because the field like of civil engineering evolved that way, environmental engineering as well. There wasn't a need in computer science prior to <laughs> this to have that, so it's how do we start that process and really put Vermont on the stage to, to, to say that we are gonna be one of the leaders in this without going directly to the regulatory yeah. arena right off okay. the bat. Okay, so that last sentence suggests to me that, that um, and I know Jane wants to talk, so I'll just do this quick, is the ethics code relates to education and development of AI in Vermont. If uh, the Burlington Police Department wants to uh, take a very, very aggressive uh, facial recognition software and buy it and use it for law enforcement, the ethics code has nothing to do with that. Who said that? No. Uh, well, that's, that's what I'm trying to get. No. Yeah. yeah that's it's why okay. I'm trying to get. Because you said yeah. not the regulation yeah. side. Well, I'm just saying, to me, they are separate yeah. issues. Yeah. It, one doesn't preclude the other, but yes. I just okay. don't All right. have So that's a regulation discussion yet to have. Yeah. Yeah. That's the way you would look at it. Yeah, but, uh, it's, but this ethics side it does, in fact, only apply to development within Vermont or educational system deployment. or people who are educated in Vermont. I, what I was hearing, I want to give Gene a chance to talk, but what I was hearing, just because then I'll say my piece, but what I was hearing from you two wasn't exclusive. It was just that an important role of this would be in education. You weren't even touching upon the other stuff yet. So I'd like to talk about the other stuff after Gene speaks, because you've been waiting. Yeah, yeah I mean, I agree with all this, and I just want to add on top, and this comes back to, you and I had a brief discussion a long time ago, it was about the aspirational thing. And here's this, that this leads in to aspirational regulation, I know it sounds kind of silly and, and oxymoron, but here is an opportunity that with the ethics code in place, this is how we go about, like for example, you're going to say that you know some particular township wants to use facial recognition, how you deploy that, how you guide that, this ethic piece gives us the framework of these are the things you think about if you're going to go for. It also gives you the piece of what you plan to. So it, it's actually both potentially uh, regulation and future policy. And this was, I remember you talked a while ago, and I, I use this example people ask me, transportation, how does it change the rural areas? How does it change for Vermont social good or social good in general? And these ethic guidelines is, you know, it's, it's the boundary policies on that. So. I, 
personally think it could spawn jobs and workforce, which is what I'm interested yes, in. Yes, I know that. Support. I know that. That's why I'm trying to. I'm, it, yeah, it is important that we ha uh, have a kind of logic tree about where we're going here. And that's all I'm trying to do is discipline that without being uh, suggesting one way or another is the right answer for it. That's at least what I'm trying to do. Now, Brian wanted to. Yeah, I wanted to say something, but I wanted to. I wanted to let everyone else who wanted to speak first. So um, when I think about this, um, I think about like what we might recommend. I, I see, um, I'm th I am thinking of it from like a legislative angle, like what bill might come out of like this, our report. And I see something that has like different sections, like the beginning being like a legislative intent. And, and you know, sort of like, what's the purpose of all this? And I would think it'd be, you know, we, in our, report we would want to talk about. Like, if we make recommendations, what are, what are we aiming at? What was the intent of this task force to begin with? And what are we suggesting? And I, the way I see it is creating some, some method for public engagement on an ongoing basis to guide the policy related to AI development. So that's, that, that's in a very general sense. So it's not as specific as education or enforcement and all these, it's, it, in a general sense, it's like how do we guide the ethical development of AI? Like how do we guide policy? And so I see one of the big things us doing is this code of ethics or a proposed code of ethics that, would, that might be put into law, like that there might be a law passed that says here is the Vermont code of ethics for AI development and then this... As it applies to who? In very general sense, oh. just very general, like, and then and then saying, here is the. Uh, th now this is just me talking, uh, it, just to put it into some kind of structure that could be picked apart. It might be like, here's the code of ethics for, for AI. It's very general sense, and here is the the body responsible for kind of taking care of this, whether it be the chief technology officer in conjunction with an advisory council or a task force or a commission or whatever you want to, however it becomes structured. That, that that body be given by us a code of ethics to work with and sort of in the powers and duties, the idea being like, hello, new body that exists or existing body that takes this on, you know, AI group, AI task force, AI commission, that here's a code of ethics to think about further and to consider how do you apply this. And so we aren't saying, oh, this is exactly how it should be applied, but we're saying that a group is, or a person or someone should take on this piece of looking at this code of ethics and considering how it should be applied as we move forward. And that could be that we talk about how it's used in education. It, it could be that there's someone with the ability to step in, like a, a rulemaking body or a, a, a person in the executive branch whose job it is to step in if the ethics are being violated with a rule. Like, you know, like, is it that the governor does an executive order, you know, that someone in Vermont is blatantly violating these ethics? Or is it that some state agency can step in and say stop until the legislature weighs in, which happens and it happens in other areas. I can give you examples if you really wanted them of different ways that this happens already in other policy areas. Um, I think examples would be helpful. Well, I'll give you one quick one. Yes. So like there's this thing called an association health plan. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a kind of health insurance that emerged as um, the federal government was chipping away at the Affordable Care Act and allowing more exemptions. The Chamber of Commerce in Vermont started working with small businesses to create this health plan outside of the other health plans, and it started siphoning people out and destabilizing the healthcare marketplace. And so there was debate around should the executive branch step in and stop it or not, but then the legislature, I'm really summarizing this quickly, stepped in and said, we had a big debate in order of whether or not to stop these or not. And then there were court cases that said that they, that they were violating the law. So there's all this stuff that went on, but the point is there were all these like opportunities along the way for different people to weigh in. You had the executive branch who had the ability to step in and say stop, which I think they did. They said, everybody stop to the legislature. Like, we're not gonna take this from anyone. You can't do any more of this until the legislature figures it out. Then the legislature waited, and then the courts were weighing in. So you had all three branches of government weighing in. And so, if, if something happened in AI now, this might happen in, from other angles, but what we're looking at is, is there some guiding central place that's monitoring it and being proactive versus reactive? And, and so, what I'm, back to what I was saying, like, if the code of ethics would be a guiding document that some body or 
group of people or would be responsible for just keeping an eye on and then they can decide as they go what they recommend in terms of like what goes beyond ethics to rules, regulations, or laws because there's processes for all those things. I guess that's what I'm getting at. So like, um, I, I see the ethics document being very general. And, and so we might identify some areas, like we might say, let's look at in the future how this could be used in education, how it could be used in, in business, how it could be used in science development. Um, so if, if I can, because I, I think like you know, as, as everybody talks, I start to put blocks and things together. Yeah. I'm like, my head's like a Lego machine or something. But so I think what you're what you're suggesting is that there's there's an aspirational statement at the top, right? Like if you look yes. at if you if you look at what we have sort of siphoned all these conversations into, I think we've got essentially three towers, meaning that we've got you know um, economic or industrial, we've got um, you know things that that fall into sort of privacy and and um, well, privacy and rights, and then another is just sort of the you know how do we how are we using AI within the you know services sector to provide greater government greater public good, right? And then at the top, so each of those may at some point have their own specific needs for a more specific mechanism to employ, like the um, what are we the. Our code of ethics, but they're going to be they're going to be very tailored to the to the needs of those groups. So the legislature may come in and say, okay, in the you know we'll have a statement for a code of ethics, but for our needs, this is just more of the aspirational. I'm trying to like do draw my Venn diagram I, here and talk. I, well, I, I think you're kind of getting it right there, actually. I'm sort of, I was thinking of the same, but is this the same? Sorta. Of. So I hadn't put education. Well. If you're thinking of the bodies, I'm just thinking more of like the impact areas. Well, I, I sort of was trying to too. Okay. Uh, kind of, but I'm I'm thinking that to your question of so what you know yeah you can write a code of ethics it, it doesn't have any teeth why right but I was thinking <laughs> that practically kind of to your Lego thought is you know in one sense Legos are old. like what Legos are old. <laughs> yeah. That's just every day. So, I mean, I'm saying that that would guide the commission. So the yes. commission could be influencing legislation, should, could be giving advice to legislation yes. or whatever else. Yeah. And that code of ethics, if we make a recommendation around education, that we have some, what are we, ta what are we suggesting? You know, like K through 12, post-secondary, you know, how does that actually happen? I think that we need to go further and say, this is what we intend to do or we propose to get yes. done, maybe under their guide, and what do we do sort of to professional communities. But I'm thinking that we, yes. if we're gonna come up with a code of ethics, to your point, we have to say to what end. And I think something, yeah. I, 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 like, I like this, I think the one area that my, my Lego blocks had that you don't have there is necessarily like um, areas for us as Vermonters to particularly invest in, right? So Okay, I love it, I love it. Uh, now, does, does, that, does that come from yeah. Code of Ethics? It, it, well, I mean, yeah, so, it, sure, sure. I like it. so kind of around the idea of like, you know, what, like the branding, I guess, of Vermont, right? Oh, like, I like that. Yeah. I, can I just thank yeah. you? The, maybe this is leapfrogging a little bit in that Venn diagram. But um, I was thinking, you know, when I saw this, when I saw this code of ethics and the structure of it, it, it really rings, you know, it's, it reads to me more like policy and strategies almost. And, and I was thinking about, you know, in Vermont, how we've had land use goals and those are in statute. And those mm -hmm. have had really a pretty significant impact over many years. And I think about what's, what's in statute with energy, which is really driving a lot of what we're doing in many areas, right? And so, when I, you know, I'm, when I, and a code of ethics to me is sort of voluntary in a lot of ways, and I'm wondering if this belongs more in statute as this is what the state believes, and then over time, different regulations and direction kind of gets hung on that, right, right? and sort of built out. And is that the right place yes. to sort of put this? Or is it just as, I mean, yeah, yeah, we, we started out the discussion that went, but I think there's a power in what, what 
John was, was advocating for with the education side of things as well. Yeah, but why doesn't it? Why doesn't education fit under this broader uh, policy? You know, goals that it, are it, it does. So, yeah. They so just I, want to emphasize I, education. I think, part. What, what? Well, they we're talking about yeah. emphasizing education. Yeah. But I think strategy, in terms of you know, to your point, is I think that the idea, you know, like let's say we build a brand for the place, which makes perfect sense, you know, for greening out or whatever you want to call it. But I do think that the code of ethics is a subset of that. This is guiding to that. But this this is a business thought, sort of a business well-being thought, not business, but general well-being. This is a make sure, you know, this is a attributes. But, this is what would drive something. A code of, I don't think of a code of ethics driving, you know, well, I'm saying I would call it's it, do no harm. This is set this to me. And this is do some good. To me, in the process. Is sorry, that right? Yeah, sorry. But to me, these four principles are like goals to me. I mean, this okay. is. Okay. Uh, a, a question to the committee, subcommittee, which is, uh, of course, primarily Brian. Do we know what uh, EU's got it, Canadians did it, what, to what end in those places? Mm. Do you know? I mean, where does it sit? Or what no, it yeah, I mean, we have other existing, no, I know, we have a public member, I'm watching. <laughs> but, uh, do we know what happened with those governmental units that have adopted one? What was the purpose there? My understanding and, is that everyone's in the process right now trying to figure this out. We're actually- oh, I thought there was one adopted States. in Canada. Yeah. There is, but in terms of how it plays out affecting law and policy, we're in the early stages of that. And, and so, so when, when I, just to be clear, like, you know, I, I wasn't the most articulate, but like when I, what I see us doing, back, back to what Joe was saying, is enshrining some code of ethics as a starting point, that's not an end point. Putting something into statute saying like, these are our code of ethics, this is how we'd like it to be done in Vermont. Regardless of what's happening in and out, and how, like, we want to start that discussion here. And then I'm thinking like that would then, it should be broad. It should be all state agencies have to take this into account when they're using AI because then in transportation, for example, when you're implementing AI, you would look at that and say, hmm, this technology that we're bringing in from China doesn't really meet our ethics. Are we going to allow that or not and have that discussion? On, we're not saying you can't use it, but we're asking them to have that discussion and then that in turn will shape our laws and our policies as we develop. But from my research, there's, there are not definitive laws that I have found yet around AI. People are having this discussion right now. I, I, don't, I, I don't disagree with any of that, but my, my concern would be that if we start out, our first step is into the legislature and the state agencies and everything else that you mentioned, if that's our, if that's our first step, then I think we maybe miss an opportunity for, you know, like the professional, you know, folks to step in and say, okay, you know, what did, what, what does this mean to us? How do we want to adopt this? How do we want to empower this? Like, it's going to be basically, somebody's going to say, okay, well, this is a government role, apparently, and then we're not necessarily saying that. That's why I like the way John has laid this right. out. I want to keep fighting for the educational component right. of it because it's spawning, you know, people are, we have I think it's one both. person businesses being spawned out of UVM. Imagine if, Right. No, okay. No, some people are, the are raising their reacting. hands. Um, some people are, are, are <coughs> not. Sure. I don't. I, I'm. I love a free flowing uh, 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 discussion. But the one point that I would like some guidance from people is that we have one member of the public here who keeps raising his hand. <laughs> and are you comfortable with him uh, addressing us at this point? Or yes. is that okay? Yes. That's my duty yes. too. But I'm going to consult you on that. If that's yeah. fine. Can you can you <laughs> Yeah, okay. You can come to the table, actually, if you're going to do that. It would make it easier for us to do it. Um, right. And, uh, and you identified yourself uh, earlier. So uh, can, can I have your name again? I My name is Henry Amistadi. Amistadi. Okay. All right. Um, uh, so, Mr. Amistadi, I will call. If, if you do want to participate, you have to raise your hand. So I'm going to be loose with that, but I am going to do that. And I'm going to, so you've raised your hand and go for it. Yeah, so I'd just like to comment um, that, I mean, the EU is leading the way in, in uh, privacy and AI protection. So I think it's, it was a good choice to start um, there. However, the EU um, regulations uh, are uh, in, in, 
forcible in many cases that they're they're at the they're trying to figure out how to actually um, you know pull some of this stuff off and also that those regulations are applying to the, uh, to the world not just to the EU and and and, and in this country you know, they wouldn't be applying to just Vermont, they'd be applying to the whole country, you know. So, you in mean, a way, in chopping mean, off some of it, and, 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 and uh, I think it should be a guiding principle, um, but um, I, I don't want it to lead us into some of the quagmires that have already been um, entered into by a lot of organizations um, in Europe. I did post on the Slack that uh, IEEE has a global initiative on ethics and autonomy and intelligence systems. IEEE is a standards organization that um, many software people um, use the standards there in the development process. So uh, in that way, it appeals closer to education and to industry and, and maybe not going as far out in these guiding principles direction as, as the Europeans have gone. So that I just recommend that people take a look at this code of ethics, because we don't want to invent our own code of ethics. Exactly. It's got to be referenceable. Um, and um, I also think that as part of um, this, this map over here, that, you know, there's, there's going to be a lot of, you know, what we shouldn't do, but that also there should be like pilot projects of well-vetted uh, machine learning, the government spending money to do machine learning to enhance, uh, you know, efficiency or productivity, you know, and, and leading the way by example and by funding this to fund organizations. In the, that latter is another subject, of course. That's yeah, that's it. Uh, so I, I just, I just want to do it. That's Jessica, all right. that's you all to say. Okay, thank you, Jessica. Hey, can I ask a quick one question? Now let Jessica go first, and then we'll get yeah, back yeah. to it. Yeah. Um, I'll recognize that I'm absolutely new to this, and I'm not an expert on technology or artificial intelligence. Um, I just, I, I think my hesitation in listening is putting something in the green books that's evolving so quickly. Just from the brief research that I did before I came here, reading a couple of documents, even a national group that was put together at the federal level who did some research and had some uh, suggested outcomes. Something that is in a field that is changing so quickly, it just, that gives me pause to put something in the green books because then it, every time the commission or the task force or whoever is permanently created, every time there is a shift, you have to go back to the legislature. So maybe, I would even say like pulling back from putting something in the green books would give more flexibility to whatever group is made permanent as everything moves forward. Um, what are green books? Oh, I'm sorry, the, the Vermont statutes, I'm sorry. So the Vermont statutes are come in. from a different world. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so is it just a point of clarity on both? Yeah, sure. Okay. So, uh, uh, so what are you saying that from a standpoint of a code of ethics, it, it should be an informal guiding document as opposed to a matter of law? Well, maybe it's an informal guiding document that the commission adopts or the task force or whatever permanent body. Maybe it's their mission okay. to use that as their guiding document and maybe update the legislature or update Vermont or whoever annually on the progress of AI in Vermont or at the national level or something. I'm just trying to think of how. So we could do this, but not create, not cast in concrete in the legislature. Is that sort you, of the you thing? You could well, do, I mean, do this in, this in, is in, in my, a couple of directions. This is my suggestion, again, because it just seems like. That makes sense. You Since everything is evolving, and if you when you put something in the green books or in, into law, the only way you change it is with another law. With another law. And yeah. we didn't, Brian knows best how that process, how long that process can take. It just, I was, okay. it, the, the latter, that is charging with a group of coming up with a, a, a code of ethics um, and then using it in the way you specify is more much more common than, than doing it as legislation. But there are both examples of both of those kinds of 
things. Uh, it depends on what you think the importance is and what the nature of it is. And of course, how quickly it gets out of date. If you put it in statute and it gets out of date because it's only aspirational or policy anyway, you tend to ignore it over time, which is you, a, another problem. Do you mind if I just ask Henry what uh, clarify? Yeah, okay, do that. Just then I'll so that uh, were you talking specifically about like GDPR and how that has become law and is unworkable? Okay, so the one takeaway, totally agree with that because I, I only try to do that for my company. But uh, I think the, the thing that you said that was so positive, uh, powerful to me is instead of having something that is just don't do harm, this notion of pilots and the idea of let's do some good and try well, some we, stuff. We're going to go back hard. around to that separate okay. thing about what can the, the government do to support and, uh, and yeah. maybe even uh, with money. Brian? Yeah, so, so um, the reason I was suggesting that a code of ethics be if, if a law is, if a piece of legislation is needed to empower a task force or a commission or whoever, a board with this work, the reason I was suggesting that code of ethics be included in that is that when you do that, you have powers and duties of a group. And we could say to them, here's your duties, but if we don't, it would be even less enforceable if we don't have the code of ethics included in that. And it, yes, it would be in the green books, but every single year the legislature updates the green books. Like every single year that I've been in the legislature, there's an act relating to boards and commissions in which there's housekeeping done in every single board and commission, whether they're eliminated, shut down, their works updated. So although one might argue that, you know, things are changing fast, the reality is that within a year the code of ethics could be updated. So if we had so this is just an argument that Fear for things changing fast shouldn't stop us from, and, and ultimately it's not going to be us anyway. It's going to be whatever legislative committees take our report up and decide to do what they want to do. But what, my point is that if we created a code of ethics and the, and that body started with that code of ethics and over, let's say they started in July and by December they decided that code of ethics needed to be updated, they could come back to the legislature in January and say the code of ethics you gave us needs to be updated. And then it could easily be updated in that legislative session. So although, um, although once things are in the books, they're in the books, the books are constantly changed. The laws are constantly, constantly changed. So um, I don't think so fear- So you really are arguing, I just want to clarify, yeah. you really are arguing for the code of ethics to be a law. Or at least, well, I don't know. I'm just saying that fear of it being a law. Yeah, I would not, argue the opposite. Yeah, exactly. But there's I no way to enforce that. The there's vision there's, or the mission of uh, this thing that we're creating for right now. I'm not saying it couldn't eventually evolve to that, but I don't think we're ready at this point. Yeah, yeah. I mean, getting, getting back to our legislative <laughs> charge. <laughs> so maybe, thank you. I mean, getting back to our legislative charge, I mean, it's not in there. Could we not say, you know, I guess it's under part three, or part, yeah, part four. four. This is something that we've come up with that we think is pretty good. Um, whether we're recommending a commission that would develop that further, or possibly suggest that it be put in the statute, um, we're just we're advancing it for consideration. We think the legislature and or future czar, commission, panel, whatever, consider further developing it and using it, but here it is for consideration. And putting that, I mean, just on, to bring it back to where our actual okay. charge is, I don't think we have to decide this will be legislative. We're not in, being invited to draft legislation on right. this. So, so I would be in favor, as I think it's great, personally, that it, we should put it out there. I don't, I don't think it's up to us to decide you know, where it goes from there. And I don't think we have to decide that either. Okay, that brings me to the point of, um, um, what the report should look like and how we get to that. Now, I think the way that is most likely to be productive and also reach a concrete and clear end is that we have a discussion like this. Different points of view come out in the course of the discussion. Questions come out, various issues come out. It goes back to the subcommittee and the subcommittee prepares a specific concrete proposal for us for the next time in writing ahead of time and then it gets to a voting stage. You don't like something that's said in there, um, then you want to take it out and uh, or not, make amendments to it uh, from the standpoint. The subcommittee heard the discussion, understands where the thinking's gone. 
uh, or not, makes the specific thing, and, uh, and that's the whole point of the October meeting. We will then vote on it. We will vote on the specifics of it, including any amendments people want uh, or whatever, and that's how we'll get to a result. Is that an okay process for you? If so, have we discussed it enough for that process to work? We gotta have a thorough discussion um, uh, for the process to work. Have we done it enough? It's not that we have reached a conclusion and taken votes or any of that. Have we discussed it enough is the question. We have for me. We're now, on that for the approach. subcommittee, which is primarily Brian, have we discussed it? Yes. I have to correct you, and I keep yeah. saying that that's not true. Yeah. Oh, There's an actual subcommittee. It's not you, I don't know who the other people Okay. Okay. So. But can you do a specific draft? So it would be like you were in your committee in the legislature and somebody put the, uh, the language in front of you, and now you have to agree on the language. So we're create, the recommendation is to create legislation. No, no, no. Okay. This is the report line. This is the final right. report line. And I was not speaking on behalf of a group when I was talking about my ideas I about how to see moving. The group has only, all we've done is agreed that this is a good summary of a code, of a proposed okay. code. Okay. Right. And that's all our group is, I don't know if we have to even meet any further. I think our group is just saying, here's a proposed code of ethics to oh. consider. Okay, if that's yeah. the if that's the state of the uh, of where we are at yeah. this point, then I and then I want a subcommittee uh, to do the drafting and pre present it for October. We're under the gun on time. We have to what, get to what, these. What else do we have to do? That's what I'm confused about. We have a specific outline? draft that we can vote, an actual draft of the report recommendation that we can vote. Is the report just recommendations, or is there like a findings, a research, a directive? A um, the exact detail of that we've not gone through either. Um, I would, I, I would like. I'm trying to think of getting to uh, the conclusion here. Is I'd like to get the rec recommendation clear, and then the support of the recommendation can be uh, done thereafter. So I think we put a paragraph in front of this, and maybe mm -hmm. include a diagram like the one. Well, I think we did. should refine it. Yeah. And I think we suggest the, the views <laughs> here that we just said right before this document that is a one-page document. Yeah, I, mean, okay? I, I think the language of the Code of Ethics itself is good. I think you're right. What you're speaking to is like framing it before. Right. So other members of our subcommittee would like to work on the frame and initiate that. That would be great. Hmm? What was that? Like if other people who are on that subcommittee, like I took the lead with summarizing the code of ethics, I don't want to take the lead with framing the code of ethics. It would be nice if other people stepped up and could frame, create the frame, create the opening paragraph and in our subcommittee. Because I don't think we need to have a whole meeting over this. It would just be the people on the subcommittee, someone putting in a little time to do that and sending it out to the rest of us. Uh, you are making it an easier task than I think it is, but uh, in any event, I got it. Yeah, Jill. Could I suggest we have a, a I don't want to call it a survey monkey, a Google poll, whatever you call it, to the subcommittee to set up the time to meet? Sure, you can, Ryan, I'm sure will help you in every way you uh, need to in order to get to the I think program. those of us who are not in Government, just in, in I, government or whatever yeah, we want to call yeah. this. I have a hard time with since you thought framing this is a difficult task. I don't know what it means to frame, it this. to frame I, I okay, still well, love it. Okay, well, I'm happy. I'm happy for that. I'm happy for that purpose, this, I'm happy for that purpose to, to join you. join you. If Brian, uh, Brian is much more full time. I'm a retired guy. He's a working four jobs guy. So I'm happy to give you more time, uh, uh, give you time for that purpose. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Maybe I could step out then and let other people spend lots of time on it. I just can't dedicate lots of time in meetings discussing okay. it endlessly at this point. Like, we can even help. Um, yeah. Me? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Uh, Ellen, volunteer to be in that group. Well, this is a. Uh, yeah, I think that's I mean, over. just to advise. Or, or provide references or whatever. Right. So uh, everything we do is public, and you saw that the group uh, liked your participation today. But in fire at the actual drafting group, you got to let us do it. 
you can oh, give us comments. Yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah. I know. Uh, so are we, are we uh, do we understand what the next task is, and are we at the point where we can go forward and do it? Is that all right? Are you going um, to are you are you, you going to organize this? Is that what you're just? I think. Well, I mean, if can, is there like a show of hands of who wants to be on the framing? So can yeah. You, okay. All right. Okay. Just just to learn yeah. what framing is. Yeah. yeah so okay. I'm happy. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Actually, so, I, I do as well, just because I, just, you know, you're a framer. Yeah. It's, it's so kind of where my your hands raised. Yeah. Okay. I can make it <laughs> slack. All right. So John. Definitely. Jean. I don't think we have to have an in-person meeting. I think it, most of it can be done via email or like via Slack. Was there anyone else? If it's via email, I want to be included. I just don't. I have a form of order. I'm sure what's happening here. Have we just the order that we have to have a meeting? Yeah. We're expanding the ethics committee to Stop people who are going to help us frame the front end of the documents you that we've been working on. Yeah. And I think we've agreed to do it via email. Uh, I, I, I think um, my reaction is maybe a little uh, relatively short telephone conversation with any of you. I think uh, 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 it's going to be necessary to get on the right direction here before it gets written. The writing of this is, I'm not going to say easy. Are we okay? Are we, are we okay now, Ryan? Who is the who is the subcommittee now? So the subcommittee will be John, Jean, yourself, Mark, me, and then Jessica. And uh, Donna. Uh, usual. I thought okay. Jill. I was not sure if Jill. Was I don't know. I thought she. Oh, she so yeah. We are trying to come up through a subcommittee with a written uh, report language that includes a recommendation with respect to an ethics code for vote at the October meeting. The subcommittee is to come up with a proposed written document. Uh, and that document will be the proposed report language, um, and it will be discussed and voted at the October meeting with respect to the ethics code. Now, the part that has been done before by the ethics subcommittee of uh, outlining what the substance of the ethics code should be, I heard uh, sitting here uh, was agreed to by everyone. What wasn't, hasn't yet been agreed to by everyone is uh, what is the use of that? What does it mean? Um, and we try to come up with some language that expresses that. There will be a division. I expect that when we finally get to vote on it, um, either those divisions will be worked out or um, there will be votes for IA and nay. Uh, We're going to come to that. Uh, but this will be getting it in the shape for a, uh, a, for a, a definitive vote um, for the report. N do you understand? Um, yes, okay. Uh, the ethics committee was also discussed briefly of the work around the impact on uh, artificial intelligence on the workforce. And I'm very interested in continuing that. Um, and also interested in serving on the email with the new subcommittee. Thank you. Okay. Um, I, 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 that reminds me, um, Jill's point about workforce is I think workforce is something we have to address also in the report. Um, I'm treating that at this point is a separate subject. It may get in on the other things, but um, I don't think the ethics uh, code provisions taken from the European Union document um, that were uh, put in front of us really address the subject. The subject has to be addressed more separately, I think. I agree. That's why I want to continue to go Okay. I think the I think the code of ethics do touch upon the subject, but in a very a very loose way. Because when you look at some of those principles, AI may affect human freedom in ways way beyond the technology. And so, 
And I had yeah. written, which is, I don't know where it is at this point, but I had written up a summary of the concerns that I had heard at all the public meetings, tried to summarize those with respect to workforce yeah. development, and was the one who actually suggested that perhaps we make a few recommendations about how we could at least we know certain jobs are going to go away, so how do we prepare Vermont to be ready for that, and how should we be helping to train people, and give them the skills necessary without having to go back and get a four-year degree? Uh, right, to, and, to, and, to and uh, you know we had some, uh, certainly discussion, presentation by uh, Stephanie Seguino and a, uh, a, together with some thoughts about where it should go, the world should go, that we should discuss, I agree. Okay. Um, we have more on the board. Uh, I, okay, uh, is this now at a point where we can move on to the harder regulatory regulation uh, section and the easier, uh, do you want a separate uh, new AI commission? Uh, okay. Can I just log that? Yes. I think we can go on to those, but I think two things that we are not that we keep dropping off. One is the education, and I don't think we have a group that's really draft crafting anything on that. Is that true? It's true. It's true that it just came up. No, it's come it's up not, a lot. It's come up but a we're lot. none of us are self-organizing, and I think that that's a key piece. And I think to Henry, we do have the IEEE document actually was sent. Yeah. And I thought we had uploaded it to Slack. To be what honest, I had it's not. On it's on there. I just but, uploaded it. But, okay. So, but I think, and we talked about it a little bit last week too. The point last week. that um, that I, I I took from your commentary is that I think. The, the notion of what we will do beyond the, the sort of code of ethics, which is a good thing, but what will we do that's proscriptive? So what can we, what will we propose will happen in education, however mechanically that happens? And I think your point about you know, pilots, so, so I think a lot of this is still caged as, you know, let's minimize the, the bad impact as opposed to let's do something proactive and show the power of the state. And I, I keep feeling that we're, we're not energizing around that like we are around the administrative aspects. So okay. I don't know what to do. Uh, no, it's, uh, we can do it in the following way, I think. I, I, um, I, so I think we can do it in the following way. Okay. At the end of the discussion, remember we have to do the five. That's what the law tells us to do. We're focusing on the five. But on the table are some things that we want to otherwise say in advising the legislature. We want to uh, talk about economic opportunities for Vermont. Uh, you want to talk about education as a fine one to add to that list, as is workforce uh, impacts uh, and, and wages. Uh, we want to say something about these subjects in addition to the five that we are telling us we have to talk about. Is that okay? Can I add it that way? Yep. But when adding it that way, just remember, you got more work and January 1 is not so far. Yeah. <laughs> just remember that. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right. So on to three. Now, I recall there was a subcommittee now uh, that was created to look at three, which is, do we recommend regulation? If so, what? And, sorry, just doing something back here. Oh, I was just <laughs> you're you're oh, working on that. Yeah. Okay, all right. Um, the, uh, 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 there was a, a subcommittee we created, I think it even met a bit at the end of the last meeting, um, uh, on do we recommend regulation and if so, what? Uh, so I call upon whoever is the spokesperson for that subcommittee to give us a report. Okay, next subject. <laughs> who, was the, who was that subcommittee? Didn't you meet at the end of the last meeting? I'm not on a regulations committee. Was that part number three? Yes, number three, yeah. Unfortunately, Ryan's computer is frozen, frozen. so <laughs> it's been frozen for yeah, what I remember about that piece, and this is without looking at any record, was at the end of last meeting, is what I recall. Well, 
We missed the part, first part. Can you repeat? I said, as I recall, the ethics committee day and had a meeting oh, at the end okay. of the last meeting. Is that what you're referring to? Okay. All right. No, I thought it was on three. And so, my, and my recollection, though, about number three, without looking at anything, was that we were going to, we had said, we ha we were, it was inconclusive about whether there was any specific regulations needed and that we needed to figure out the code of ethics before we could go there and that's why we were tasked with coming up with a, a concrete code of ethics. I don't, that's what I remember. Like I don't remember us having a subcommittee to look at regulations. I remember personally I wrote down some things based on our conversation like areas of potential regulation that might be coming up for example um, motor vehicle related stuff like like transportation might recommend changes to, to the law as they implement autonomous vehicles, but we're not ready to make those, you know, we were looking at the code of ethics. Right, so can I just ask a question, um, again back to the specific charge, is it to answer the question of whether or not the state should consider or pursue regulation, or is it to come up with a system of regulation, like, I don't think it's quite that. Here's what Perrin 3 says. Certainly we could make recommendations above and give yeah, bonus yeah. points if we want, but I seem to recall being a more limited. Yeah, it says, is it needed yeah. or not? Right? It, yes, yeah. but it says a proposal for state regulation of artificial intelligence if needed. If needed. So at least uh, one thing you'll see in the memo I did about the study one, that's five, that, that we uh, clearly discuss layering. That is, we'll do the study one, and then it might need to change what we're recommending if this you add regulation to this commission. But at this point, we're just talking about a commission that studies. Um, and then you know, that's the first layer, and the second layer is, all right, you want to add regulation. So one of the questions that clearly was on the table was discuss something. Here it is. I'm sorry, I'm going to turn this off. I will do it now. So was, um, do we uh, do we expect the permanent AI commission? And I'll read five, so you know what that means. Uh, which is currently thought to be a study commission. Do you want to give it any regulatory authority, or do you want to give regulatory authority somewhere else in state government? Um, digital services. They're in the technology business. Uh, it happens we have the head at the table here. I already said no, but that doesn't <laughs> mean that he can't be outvoted just like everybody else. <laughs> um, so uh, uh, do you want to do that? So that at least question is, uh, is had a little bit of discussion from it. As to the part, a proposal for state regulation if needed, if you say not needed, of course, uh, that's easy. If you, if you, but if you do say needed, uh, you do end up them acting for more specifics than you suggested. Do we agree that it's needed? That what's needed? Regulation. Any state so, regulation. So regulation. Yeah, We've I was going to say, I don't necessarily, many, many times. Yeah, I, I was going to say, I don't necessarily think that that question is stating, give us a proposal for regulation. Yeah. It may be actually saying, what is your viewpoint as to how we may get to regulation, exactly. yeah. right? Yeah. So when I look at like three and four together, like when we, as we just kind of synthesize this whole ethics discussion, I think three and four kind of blend in that process because we're saying in that framing of, you know, we're going to have an aspirational statement, but there is a pathway through this map here at which some point somebody will probably would be responsible for legislation. Somebody will be responsible for, you know, how do we educate um, the, the next generation or the current generation of technologists who may be applying these technologies. And then also how do we, you know, take advantage of this within our, our economy and public services sector. So I think those three and four are really kind of together, but they really are represented through that map there that we got started. Okay, but is this, a, is this the way you would address it, which is, I mean, that is a decision. The way you address it is, uh, you have a code of ethics. The code of ethics is uh, administered by a commission, and the commission, to the extent that uh, a regulation is suggested by the application of the code of ethics, uh, the commission uh, proposes legislation for that purpose. Is that the way you want the process to work? I mean, that's the way that is. I, I think I think that's kind of where we were 
in the past, in our past discussions, I think where we kind of landed was the idea of a code of ethics being used by whoever as a guiding document for rules, regulations, and laws as needed, but that we weren't saying we were proposing anything specific right now. We were just saying, hey, everyone, keep an eye out for this using these principles. That's what I, where I thought we were at in the discussion, at least as our subcommittee, um, and where there doesn't seem to be clarity yet is, are we going to have a board? Are we going to have a task force? Are we going to have a commission? Are we going to have something like that to work in state government as like a watchdog over this? Or are we just going to have none, none of that? And so, okay. so can I propose a change and a little bit, you know, maybe somewhat radical is that we basically take whatever, since we did grow the ethics committee, subcommittee to a large group, that we basically reframe that group to be, you know, the, whatever, for lack of better terms, little three and four, Mapping yes. task force. Yes. Well, if this is as much as you're going to say about regulation, uh, then then fine. If you're going to, if if in fact, uh, the answer to the if needed question is it's needed, um, I think you may have to uh, continue separately. I mean, and I think based on our discussions over and over and over, everyone does not want. Well, I mean, we could take a vote right now. As to whether Let's we do a strong to specify. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Let's do strong. Because I think we should do that. Because every time we go down this rabbit hole, it, we can think of specific examples where it might be nice, but we're not ready to go there. Right. Listen to all the testimony that we heard around the medical field, the health, you know, all the different types of applications yeah, we've had. James had a like, witness on the phone that gave us five different exactly. regulations <laughs> that she addresses, right? You yeah. want those? You're going to put those on? I don't think that's actually our charge. Yeah. Okay. All right. I, I mean, we can certainly put it in there. there. Again, I think it, that would be sort of bonus points. We could say, yes, we think regulation is advisable given all the risks and benefits. I don't think that that's a good point with bonus points. So. Well, but I, I think it's going above and beyond what the, uh, what, the, what the charge is. I certainly think we could point the way towards any number of things, but I think most fundamentally we have to answer the question, is regulation Required and what might that look like? I think we could. And, and what I'm hearing is that the answer is we don't yet know whether it's required, right. and the permanent commission needs to decide that question. Is Can that it? Two totally opposite provocative things. <laughs> As I go, um, so one is so the the charge was is regulation needed, and we're all saying mm, you know we really haven't come up with it. Might we want to actually take a more activist stance? Again, kind of pointing to Henry's Henry's testimony, it was is to say not only do we think it, do we not see that, but we actually would take a we would bias towards you know on something so fast moving as you said, you know that it is ill advised that the government you know that we we monitor we watch we adapt but regulation on something because the the particular ruling that he's talking about GDPR has been a nightmare. Good intention, absolutely 100% in time, and, well, but it's unenforceable and it's creating tens of billions of dollars worth of make work well, that's well, not actually achieving the goal. So, so my, it's impeding small businesses. It's impeding small businesses. The, the big companies, it's, it's ad advantaging large companies and really impeding. So my question would be would we want to take a provocative stance and say that not only do we not think of that, but we think it might be ill-advised. Okay. So, so maybe we don't so, believe that. Yeah. So I, I'm I'll, gonna, I'll leave the other provocative. That was the easy one. So I'm going to jump into the provocative pool, I guess. Um, I'm, I don't know that our, since we're going to be talking about a commission and we've, we've acknowledged that, you know, the, the um, I don't know, what's the word I'm trying to come up with? The, the compel people are, the, the points where things are compelled to be done are gonna be done later, right? I think what we're doing with this report is essentially framing understanding for the legislature. And I think we're also framing sort of the, how do we recommend whatever, since we are gonna land on a, there needs to be a permanent commission, how do we frame things for them to, because they're gonna be tasked by the legislature. So how are we framing essentially their tasking and responsibilities going forward? 
And so I think if we were to talk about, I think this is important, and then I also think like the roles, and we don't want to talk about it now, but I'm just throwing it out there as something. We talk about the roles of the commission, like who's on the commission, what are their responsibilities. I think those two conversations essentially give us the full framing of the report to the legislature. Because we're not going to have, they don't want from us an in-depth report on what is AI in, ag in agriculture in Vermont look like and what can we do with it. They want to know, like, okay, AI we know is, is large, what are some of the key areas, and how can we start to manage this? Okay. Uh, the only thing that's a bit discordant about this discussion to me was that earlier I asked about would the ethics control something like whether a town used aggressive facial recognition uh, uh, software in terms of law enforcement and people sort of said, oh no, that's a matter of regulation that we have to discuss. So I, I just want to be clear uh, that regulation is a big subject with lots of things in it. You know, right. Some of them uh, you might say about the, oh I don't want to I have the heavy hand of government getting into that point. We ought to put it. Some of them might say, geez, uh, privacy is so important to me. I do want the heavy hand of government getting into that. Uh, are there parts of regulation that are in the latter category? If you uh, say no, that's okay. I, 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 that's where I think like, the role of the board or that commission just becomes important because I think part of that commission should be the, like, you know, basically creating the, you know, the initial use cases and need and sort of boundaries for for regulation so maybe that commission needs to have you know um, you know a law enforcement person mandated to be on it they maybe need to have a um, I don't know I can't I don't want to think about all the rules right now but but to your question of like at what point do we touch regulation I think it's really through that commission okay I, yeah I mean I think I do that I mean John made it sound like I don't think we're voting on do we start regulating tomorrow with like a group. It's like, is this something that we should move forward? And like, if there was, if there were no risk and benefits, there would be no need for a code of ethics. There would be no need for a commission. Right. And if the answer is no, then like, we nothing to see here. We can close the shop. And then, but like, on the other hand, we're not being called upon to say yes. This is an area that has lots of risks and benefits. It does require further study and probably will require some regulation at some point. Yes. Does that mean that we have that ready to go tomorrow and we start shutting down AI? Like, no, that's not the question. I really think we have to stay focused on the legislative uh, questions. And, and again, I think we can go past that and say, hey, we actually think this code of ethics might be worth considering working. But like, we don't have to answer all of these questions. And I, I think sometimes we're over complicating our charge a little bit. I also apologize I have to run, but I will be at the next at the next meeting. I look forward to it. I knew there was a punchline to this. Just just a quick question. Okay, great. All right. So when everybody's talking on the same side of a subject, which is what seems to be occurring here, then um, I want to close it and move on because we have a lot to do. Uh, is that okay? Can we close that? You've heard the discussions. Is everybody satisfied with where we're going at this point on this? Um, okay, I am going to call, you understand the gun we're under in time, so that's why I'm being careful with you. Very, very uh, short, okay. very short. Uh, something maybe in the, in the middle, um, where we say uh, we're, we're not recommending any regulation at this time needs further study. However, there may be some areas we might want to focus on initially, like health care, autonomous vehicles, whatever we think the heavy hitters are there. So the, these should involve further study. So. Okay. Uh, is Brian looking to? Yeah, I have a meeting to do it. Have to and you know I'm leaving. Yeah, the she's, she's clearly. Okay. I'll Brian, you Brian, Brian thank, you, wait. thank you for the Two more minutes. Uh, yeah, you might make me late for my new meeting if you make me wait two minutes. So make it snappy. All right. <laughs> Uh, uh, you've seen the uh, for, uh, the draft uh, minutes of the last uh, meeting. Can I have a motion to oh, yes. approve? Motion yes. to approve. Approved. Yep. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Less than two minutes. Less than two minutes. <laughs> Did you want the straw poll? Hey, Brian. So just for that poll right there, those genes first, John second. 
because it's five is becoming more important all the time uh, from the way we're going. What is this commission all about? What is it going to do? What, what is the things that are, are important about it? Now, I've been a subcommittee of one trying to develop along the line what it would be, and I sent you a memo last night with some specifics about what I think. Now, Part of it is something I did earlier, which is I found that there are two current study commissions in uh, state government uh, which are permanent commissions and can recommend uh, uh, policy development or action or whatever uh, it may be. Um, they happen to be next to each other in the statute books and they're as different as you can imagine and different from us, which is the Commission on Women uh, is uh, is one of them, and the other one is the uh, Commission on International Trade, uh, neither of which is, is our subject. But they give you some good, uh, they give us a kind of a good roadmap of how we would uh, structure uh, this kind of commission. So you'll see in the memo I did today, um, I uh, suggested that uh, we say about the, um, and I went through the subjects of structure and membership, um, uh, uh, to whom does the commission report and uh, what are the responsibilities of the commission uh, and made some suggestions about it. Structure and membership, I noticed that the other two standing commissions are very much like this task force. They have, they're large, they're not small. If you were actually doing uh, uh, regulation, particularly if you're doing any adjudication, uh, they tend to be small, so the Public Utility Commission is three people. Uh, but study kind of commissions are big in general, so I think one's 10, one's uh, 16, uh, we're 14. Um, I think uh, uh, I would suggest a commission of like us, 14, or something like that. Um, that it have uh, stakeholders. This one has representatives of organizations on it. Um, it has the co common kind of ways that uh, people on the, uh, 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 these things get on. Uh, the governor appoints. The governor appoints from a list or a kind of person. Uh, the legislature appoints. The legislature uh, was required, allowed to appoint Senate and House, but they have to appoint academics. Uh, you, that kind of thing is uh, not uncommon. Um, and then there are certain kind of uh, stakeholders that come on uh, automatically. Uh, I don't know that we have to say in any detail about this sort of thing, other than to say that there ought to be a diversity, it's important. Um, it has to be enough size to have diversity. You've got to have stakeholders, you've got to have experts, you've got to have the people who know about this. Uh, because this, after all, is primarily study and recommend, uh, not regulation. So that was the first point that I made, yes. Just a point of clarification. So for us, though, since we're all going inside a uh, recommending perfect commission, uh, we are also just making recommendations, and then it's the legislature that of would course. put a specific okay, of course. Okay. And this is a subject, by the way, the legislature bargains over, and maybe more important than anything else to them, uh, you know, who's at the table yeah. kind of subject. Um, and so I, I would not write detail of this particularly, other than to say the things I just said. Uh, about this size, diverse, uh, all of this sort of thing. If it were me, I would, for example, I think the overlap with the Attorney General on data 
uh, is important, and I would have included the Attorney General. I wouldn't have included the uh, Chief Justice of the Supreme Court appointing somebody, uh, <laughs> by the way. Uh, but that's, a, that, you know, for that permanent thing, it's okay for this. I mean, I, I think you wouldn't keep these 14 people. You would have some differences. Yeah, right. In regard to representation, I know earlier in the task force, we had Milo, yeah. but he went to MIT, I believe. I saw him this last yeah. weekend, by the way, in the hackathon. At where? Yeah. Anyway, I, I spent some you time. You saw him there. in Boston? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So See, that's the problem. <laughs> exactly. So he's gone now. So would we appoint someone new? We, we yeah, it's, a, it was a, it's a gubernatorial appointment, right? I'm but this is your target. You need this kid. Yeah, you're talking you about the next. Henry is a high school kid? <laughs> <laughs> what, Henry, can you take some classes? Oh, we had a, we had a, we had a what grade is that role? Yeah. Uh, one member of a secondary or post-secondary, yeah. one member who is a secondary or post-secondary student in Vermont appointed by the governor. Yeah. You'd have to go back to the governor. You're going to introduce somebody new at this time? I think it's a little late. I think he had it quite a bit. And he said that he wanted to, is he able to still participate, like in reading stuff? Or? Uh, well, I, you know, yeah. one thing, have, have you had a conversation with him? I haven't, I haven't had any conversations with him. He hasn't responded to any, like, emails. Okay. Or, uh, uh, I would I say, Ryan, we need to talk about how to try to make the final meetings as inclusive as possible. Yeah. And one thing we got to do is one of us, or Brian, needs to talk with him directly and try to get him, at least by phone, into the voting part of this. I mean, when we get to the, the specific harder stuff. And so we've got we've got our uh, post secondary student. <laughs> we just need to get him to the table. Okay. Right? Okay. Uh, so you, uh, any more discussion about the makeup of what kind of commission we're talking about? Anything more you want to say about that? Okay. Uh, one, one really important question is how do you make that squiggle? What squiggle? The section <laughs> sign? Yeah. Is that a, it's a section it's sign? It's a section. Section yeah. sign, yes. Well, I thought mathematicians had the, the squiggle. It's a section sign. <laughs> I was reading this last night, and I was like, I was pointing. Boy, we do live in different worlds. You can find it in Microsoft. The Microsoft squiggle. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a symbol. It's a symbol that you yeah. you. It's a squiggle symbol. It's a symbol. I so uh, I, 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 when I use Word, I always put in SE. Whenever I put in SE, it up shows the sign. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, that's the way I do it because it happens a thousand times in the kind of writing that I do. Yeah. Uh, but not in the kind of writing you do, obviously. Okay. So the question is, who does the the, the uh, uh, commission report to? Um, so there's a lot of study committees, um, and there's, most of them report to are within agencies and report to agencies. But that only makes sense if what you're reporting is something the agency can do, uh, or recommendations or whatever. And the problem with this subject is it crosses all of them. Thank you. No, no. Thank you. Uh, I don't have a card on okay. here, but I will see what future events okay. like this. I'm not going to the tech chain. I'm, I'm, I'm only going to have to ask it. I'm taking it with me. No. <laughs> no we are clearly now getting down to a sub form. Um, and uh, uh, it, this one is, of course, a, a crosses everything kind of thing, so there's nobody to report to when you're making register, particularly now with this. You're making recommendations with respect to legislation and all of that. It doesn't make sense that this would be uh, within an agency, which is a different question for the than the administrative support question. Um, uh, who, who are you reporting to? Are they making regulation or are they recommend uh, recommending? Recommending. Yeah. yeah. Or rules and they, Well, depending upon how this comes out yeah. in language, but I understand it's recommending. Um, the, uh, uh, so um, I think what you do is it's both both the, both the two uh, study commissions, the, governor, the Commission on Women and the uh, International Trade, um, uh, require reporting to every everybody: the executive, the legislative, the public, uh, and maybe specific other people. One of them even to the members of Congress. That's of course international trade, not. Um, 
this. We don't care what Bernie thinks about this, right? Uh, you did at one point. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, I would just take some language from that and 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 uh, do a you know generally report to all of those. I would continue to have the commission an input side that is meeting with the public and getting information from the public. I think that um, that's in the uh, commission on women. Um, I would have a specific thing about recommendations for legislation, which is of course coming up um, here. Um, and, and both of those have all of that general stuff. The question that's hard and is the hardest question uh, in respect of whether this will ever get adopted is, is it freestanding? Does it need a direct appropriation? How large? Um, and interestingly, the two models have a totally different approach on this. The Commission on Women is freestanding, has a, a office and staff. The Commission on International Trade is really part of the uh, Commerce Agency. Um, and uh, the legislation uh, I like is, um, it's entitled to staff services, the Agency of Commerce and Community Development, the Legislative Council, and the Joint Fiscal Committee. Uh, we heard from the Joint Fiscal Committee last time, they are the arm of the legislature with respect to financial uh, appropriations and, and uh, uh, taxes and that sort of matters. There's a joint committee, House and Senate, and then a significant staff. And one of the people came and, and uh, talked to us about that. Um, legislative Council is a agency, is a part of the legislature also, that is effectively the part that does the bill drafting uh, and advice to the committees and to the legislature generally on the drafting and, and uh, wording of legislation. Uh, so that's obviously in that direct. I have no idea how, it's good, maybe Jessica can tell how much uh, staff services uh, you get, um, it gets from me, because I know nothing about the well, Commission so, on International. <laughs> oh, yeah, so my, um, so we have an international, I'm pretty sure that it's staffed by our international trade director. So he is, you know, paid in that position previously by the agency. And I could be misspeaking, but that would be my best educated guess. I've only been at the agency for about a month. Um, mm -hmm. The Commission on Women. So just as part of my background, I used to do boards and commissions for Governor Shumlin. Uh, so I, I know a lot about boards and commissions and a lot about um, establishing those laws. But um, with the, like you said, um, Justice Julie, with the uh, Commission on Women, they do have an executive director that's a full-time staff person. Um, that's uh, a state employee, so she is paid, um, and she has some staff, so she's paid out of the general fund. Um, my only caution, and I know that we're not necessarily there yet, but is that we don't have Ryan forever at ACCD, so um, I would say that if, from ACCD's perspective, if this was brought to ACCD, we would ask the legislature for an appropriation for admin if we were included. Um, there we only have about 80 staff, um, and in economic development, maybe about eight. So um, that would be something that we would ask for. Again, just because Ryan isn't going to, unfortunately, well, he could be with us forever. We don't know yet. We'll see. We, yeah, we'll see. But um, it has to be someone's role, and someone has to be paid to do that work. So, right. Just want to throw that. So out this there. is something we should probably say. Do you're talking about an independent commission with its own staff. Are you talking something yeah. that uh, gets staff support from other sources? Um, I frankly I think this is not very workable. Uh, entitled to staff services, so it goes to the secretary and says, I'm entitled to staff. Uh, and you get uh, certainly it's even worse if you go, I have a legislative count. I'm entitled to staff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> my, only other, my only other thought, and not to like shake things up too much, but that there are there is a different um, like kind of Border Commission structure that's an advisory board to the governor. So he has like a different, he has a certain set of like advisory boards. They are only gubernatorial um, appointees. So he appoints the entire one, which makes it an advisory board to him. Um, but that could be another option that, you know, you create an advisory board to the governor on AI. They report to everyone, but they advise him on artificial intelligence policy. Um, do they ever, do they survive regime change? Um, they do, but they, but again, they serve. I mean, just like any other gubernatorial appointee, they serve at will. So they serve at the will of the governor. They may, in other words, they may, 
right. uh, survive regime change, as you call it. <laughs> the, the, uh, yeah, and, and in that way you get, you know, we have a recommendation, uh, uh, let's say we're the uh, permanent AI commission, we have a recommendation that there ought to be certain kind of regulation costs for a certain kind of application uh, in consistent with the ethical standards. Um, we go to the governor, and the governor says, I hate regulation, end of the story. Uh, so the question is, do you have direct access to the legislature with a recommendation? Now, the ones that are advising the governor don't. They don't. I mean, that's the whole, that's the whole the point, point of it. They, they, they can recommend to the governor, but they have no, they can't be on that. Maybe asking both of you, I mean, it, so there are all these different alternatives, and you've researched this well. Do we have an example of, a, of you know, some great examples, some terrible examples of, you know, anyone we would follow here? I mean, have you been involved in any of these advisory bodies that either works for the legislature or work for the government that have been particularly solid and helpful and grown, and some that have crashed and burned? Yeah, that, there's a history here. Uh, Jessica may know it more. Um, there used to be a lot of these things. Uh -huh. And what happened is that they uh, just atrophied to the point of uh, they were um, just taking up space in, in the green books. Uh, and the result is that they developed this system of sunshine as, uh, yeah, sunshine, I'm just sunset. Sun sun setting. Yeah, I got the wrong side. Uh, <laughs> sun setting them uh, uh, because uh, they sort of uh, lose their relevance over a period of time. So ones that are actually permanent, now remember that's the question in the, in the, uh, of us in the report. The ones that are actually permanent are very few study. Mm -hmm. Now there's a lot of regulatory commissions out there. Uh, ones that have, you know, the Public Utility Commission I, I gave you as an example, most people understand uh, rates and regulation of the, of the utilities of the state, understand what that will do. And of course there's a lot that are connected with professions. Uh, medical practice, all of the various professions have a board that uh, it does deals with the licensing and deals with the ethics and the discipline um, side of it. There are, are, are many of those around. But a pure study commission that's permanent, you're down to just these. The ones I just talked to you about, okay. they're running. Right. <laughs> so you. Well, it also brings to mind, and I don't, I can pull up the legislation, or, but the, um, there's a, um, Employment, uh, employment of individuals with disabilities um, uh, board. There's um, certain, you know, advocacy type. Um, I guess, like, I don't know. They study and hear from the public and then make recommendations, you know, for certain things. Um, that one comes to mind. Um, Most of those are reporting though to an agency uh, head. Okay. So ones that are actually out there with a broad report to and include recommendations okay. for legislation are these two. I went through them all. Oh, okay. so, well, I was just thinking like the you know groups that I worked with that met regularly, you know, there's uh, a Veterans Affairs group and they probably, again, report specifically to the Veterans Affairs office, but um, they were very involved with, when I worked for Governor Shumlin, with the work of Governor Shumlin and saying what the, uh, the employment of individuals with disabilities, that group met, made recommendations to the governor as well. Um, and also direct reporting. Um, so there's, right now we're talking about, you know, guidance to the legislature and the governor, and, and at some point though, you gotta imagine there will be like laws, policies, and things like that set up. And my, my question is, do we think that this board will be also, at some point, responsible for ensuring compliance of the state and compliance could, could right? be right. Uh, so, because if if the board turns around and says, or the commission, commission is the word in the statute, so I'm right. using this. The commission says um, there ought to be this regulation, and the legislature comes back and say, "Oh yeah, we agree. Uh, will you do it?" Uh, that question com commonly comes, right? So you're in an agency that went through a transformation very much like this, right? So my question is Originally, you were a service agency, service department for the rest of state government, right. many of which didn't want your service, if I understand the history of it here. Yeah. Uh, at, remember, I was the secretary of administration, yes. so I've lived through that 
part of the world. And then along came, gee, we got to get them together on common platforms and common technology. And certainly we don't want to spend millions of dollars on stupid systems that don't work, so you get regulatory authority. Yeah, I was, I was thinking more of like the E9 on one board, though, because, you know, their responsibility is understanding sort of yeah. national level guidelines, technologies that are involved in it, interfacing with the different states, towns, private, private sector that all kind of engage there. They got a compliance, they got, they had at some point a, um, a service provision aspect to them as well, so. So they do more than study and recommend, that's the point. Right, yeah, but I'm just thinking, but my thought, you know, where my head has kind of gone is that I see, like, down the road, this commission as, as AI technology and, and privacy issues and regulation, everything starts to mature, that this commission maybe morphs into something more like the 911 board. And so in, in, in the vein of, like, looking at existing committees and boards that kind of, you know, we could possibly start the model. Yeah, that could, that, okay. that could uh, 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 be true. Uh, so the question is, what do we say in the report? Now, I'm trying to get to the same place that we were talking about getting to with this, which is that I would like to write this up and we would vote on it next time. So that's yeah. why we're having this discussion on this one, just the same kind of place that we were with the other one. I just uh, want to just add one comment about <clears throat> just making sure that whether it's independent or it's housed in an agency that has the resources it needs. Yeah. Right, That's because nice thing, yeah. you know, one of the you know, like all day today, you're really pushing people to write things that they, you know, you know, we're like there's staff here that, you know, that like, our task force members are acting like staff in a lot of ways, and that's just the way this was set up, I guess. So they need the resources. Is yeah, that yeah. I was just going to comment that we I switched into this role a month ago, and the Secretary of Commerce is on sixty different. Or it's like serves on right. and so, staff and staff right. <laughs> and, so, and so my comment was that if you know if from AC and this is again we're looking like way ahead, but if ACCD were to contact you and say comment on this in the legislature and this whole process, my my comment to the legislature would be if you want us to staff this, we need resources. And so that's a budget conversation. And so just recognize the yeah, the yeah, resources yeah. in the yeah, staff. I also think my, my bigger point is without the resources, it's not going to be effective. It just can't. No. So either way, you have to get the resources. And that is where this will be the hard sell in the legislature. That is, uh, yeah. oh, another one of those boards of resources. You would think, hey, the resource here compared to a, a couple of billion dollar budget is pretty small. Uh, but, um, but, yeah, and uh, it's the small ones that are the most difficult ones often to get than the, the, the significant ones. And there will be a lot of skepticism about this, you know, what, what do, we, do we really need it? The sales really is uh, is about, that's why I go with the responsibilities, all right, what it will do? Is what it will do worth it? Um, that will be where the sales are, and, they, and you're back to, well, this is, you know, a critical thing. The, uh, and uh, we have to have a way uh, uh, to have oversight over it, and um, we're constantly monitoring it and, and recommendations as we go along. Yeah, and, I, you know, you mentioned earlier that I constantly say, hey, no, not, you know, this, you know, ADS, the Agency of Digital Services, or the CTO, because the reason I say those kinds of things is because the challenges we're going to run into are not the technology challenges, like whether we're using one AI or another, or what interfaces we use don't matter as much as what are the you know what are the privacy impacts, what are the you know commercial impacts, what are the so I don't think you know I, I mean even though it's a there's technology that makes it complicated to understand sometimes I don't know that that we're in any way the driving. You know, the, the person who could drive the bus to better place. No, I assume not. Yeah. I, I, I could say no, no part of state government can buy anything that involves AI over, like your law now, over a certain amount of money, mm -hmm. um, unless the certification that privacy is adequately protected by the agency of digital service. Well, whether privacy is adequately right. protected or not is not your skill, right. right? So that would be, you're the, you, you happen to have a regulatory authority like that. But it's not for protecting a value like privacy. Uh, that's where the problem is. Yeah, happens. I mean, we are getting more involved in, like, you know, the cybersecurity space. Our, our, that one I see, yeah. Yeah, our chief information security officer is getting more involved in advising local government, small business, 
you know, how to protect themselves because that become and this you could probably argue likewise, but I think that role was built with that mission in mind. So similar to ACCD's issue, it would be okay, let's define a new role for you know such an agency and and create a new per you know person and fund him or her. So so I probably would say, in view of this discussion, that then we should, uh, I should do language that talks about an independent commission like that, um, and that it has to go to the legislature and get its resources. Uh, that would be the way it would be, and it's not trying to get them from any you. <laughs> you or and do you have to? Do there have to be members of the legislature on the on the commission to access those legislative resources? Um, no, but I would recommend there be a okay. member on the okay. permanent commission because whenever you are recommending legislation, uh, you need a, a sponsor advocate. Right. Uh, yeah. And you know, Brian Chin is here not as a legislator; he's here for the social worker organization. Yeah. There is really not what one not one here. This was his bill, though, right? That established, wasn't it? Yeah. The mediator of this bill, yeah. yeah. Starting to establish the committee. Yeah. Yeah. But I think a permanent commission needs a legislator because you're making recommendations for legislation. And you need a champion, but you also need somebody to help get the appropriations process to uh, get you some money. Yeah, I think that's that's really critical that you get um, an effective legislator on that. Uh, I noticed that the the one on uh, international trade has got legislators on it. Uh, so now we get the responsibilities. So it's report and recommendations. We went through some of that, including recommendations for legislation. Um, and you see I gave a sort of summary of this. I would probably expand that a little bit um, uh, to go over an annual report and specific uh, reports uh, where needed. Um, uh, I would require an annual report of executive lunch and the public and special reports for developments indicate the need. The annual report should be filed at the beginning of each year, right before the opening of legislative session. The report should include an overview of the benefits resulting from the use of AI generally and the potential negative consequences of a section on use in Vermont generally and within state government. Should analyze potential and actual negative consequences in four areas, privacy, protection, security, safety, and reliability. That's. Uh, uh, as well as job opportunities and wage income, that question. Um, to the extent that negative consequences can be reduced or avoided by legislation, should be a uh, commission should recommend that to report on compliance with ethical standards and development and marketing products using AI and transfer currency, which is one of the ethical standards of algorithms used. Um, it should report on economic opportunity and usage of ways to increase that opportunity uh, through government action including legislation, which will specifically identify opportunities for development of AI-assisted applications that can be made in Vermont by jobs and income. So that's roughly it. Is, um, I might amplify that a bit. Is there anything? Is that okay? Sounds good. <laughs> okay. Five, as I say, five will be a lot easier than four <laughs> and three. Three, yeah. Uh, three, four to be a diagram. Okay, so let's go. Jelly, you're still on? Okay, so we said other subjects, not in that five for the report uh, that uh, we want to address. Um, one of them I sort of addressed here about the economic opportunity of AI development. I don't know whether you, we want to go further into that subject substantively. Um, we noticed that got raised by our public participant here, um, and it's come up. Education is another such similar kind of thing, what we said, and certainly uh, uh, workforce and labor uh, impacts are others. If we are going to do those in a limited amount of time, then we got to develop a process of getting them uh, a, a, a clear recommendation to go and then uh, to be able to do that. What, and uh, do we have a few minutes to talk about the, let's just take the education one as an example. Sure. So what would we propose? I mean, you, you always get us to the right question of, you know, who, what would actually happen? Who would do something? But I started, I, um, I posted, I can't remember the guy's name, but he's in Department of Education, found a guy who's responsible. He, um, you probably know him. He's the education tech guy. 
Kevin Biani? No. But he works for. I'm sure I don't know. Though. Yeah, he works for the. Okay. Yeah. But um, if we were going to recommend that, say, there's you know a curriculum of you know, based on our code of ethics, you know, just some unit. Yeah, that's not the right place. The tech guy isn't the right place. For that. No, no, no. But I, I know. But I've been trying to find somebody. It, but it, well, I guess my question is, what would the shape of a recommendation be? I, I'm really struck that I feel that we will have done our job, but not made much impact if we come back and say, you know, people should be good. I really like the idea of actually, as a result of our work here, putting something in motion. And so if we could pilot uh, an education program or pilot uh, <coughs> a good thing, I, I don't know, you know, I'm naive when it comes to that, you know. If we throw it out there and say, someone should, I know that no one will do anything. So what would we do what would let's take I, an education I don't know the internal organization of the education department these days, so I don't know. I did at one point. So uh, they used to have all these substantive area specialists uh, that advised and consulted with uh, local school districts on various subjects like music or like uh, specific uh, uh, areas, history, whatever is the like, like, uh, typical curriculum subjects. Now, I don't know whether, uh, I assume that there are classes now that are related to uh, technology in um, uh, secondary education. And I assume there's some consultant like that somewhere in the education Evidently. department. You couldn't find such a person, obviously. Evidently not. And this guy is the guy who's advocating for AI tooling and stuff, and that's why. And, and it was just a chance meeting. But I guess my question is, Runway aside, you know, for how much work, what, what would we, how would I do that? What would I, what would I come up with as a recommend? I'm not suggest, not saying what the recommendation should be, but what, how bold should we be, given that we don't have money to spend, etc. What, what would be a realistic, in, in terms of your joint experience in government, like if we said we should. But if you could get independent buy-in from a state college or UVM or you know something like that. But if you're gonna direct AOE or the Agency of Education to implement a or pilot program, program they're probably one of I mean I talk about ACT, but they're probably one of the most strapped um, agencies in state government. And I don't want to make this all about money because I think that this is a bigger conversation, a more important conversation than that. Um, but I also want to be realistic in terms of the, So, So if I were to, I mean, I don't know how to, but it would be fun if I could find a body. Let's say I volunteered Donna, since she's not here, but Donna's boss, the dean, would be totally, like, maybe helpful in doing this. And if we said, you know, UVM, out of the goodness of their heart, is going to do this, again, it's resource, but they, they tend to, that this kind of outreach is good for them, it's good recruiting. So I'd have to line up the people to do it and then go to DOE and say, here, I've got some, I, and I would only propose it as a pilot, not a mandate, you know, like, let's try this. And if I, but I'd have to line up the people, right? I wouldn't, I couldn't just recommend somebody else do it. Is that what you're saying? I, I, I think you could, but it would have to be, it wouldn't it have to be a legislative directive for them to be forced to do it. And I think what I heard you say is, eh, you know, I'd rather carrot than stick, right? So, well, yes, and you have to uh, find somebody who has a carrot they're willing to give you. Uh, I think I can. Okay. Right? But it's, that's it's, not a, it's not as long as it's not a multi-year right. thing. It's like, uh, let's try this. Yeah. I would go back to uh, uh, seeing if you can penetrate the Department of Education um, does anyone know you? I don't know. I knew. Uh, I think the La Seca. I would get you there. Who yeah. Who would you know? I know. Uh, is it Is French still the secretary? Yes. 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 Yeah. So he has not been very responsive. I knew. Uh, I mean, I can connect you with the deputy secretary. They also have a like a legislative assistant or a liaison yeah. as well. Um, and, and I they know have a CTE director. So to think of like. 
somebody. If you so whoever you whoever is there. the person who uh, assists local school districts in curriculum development uh, kind of activities in this subject field that you're interested in would be somebody on the ground who would understand the carrot and sticks uh, situation with respect to that kind of thing at, um, in that right. subject area. Now, well, you have I, to find that person. Now, I, 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 I'm telling you a person I think probably exists. Who is that? No, you don't I don't know the well, answer. Anybody could help. I mean, I know how strapped. So I've created, we, in base, we give $17,000 a year to Vermont teachers to help them buy science equipment. But there's zero, there's will, but zero energy in DOE for what we tell because they're so strapped as you said so so what we really want is permission to go try something rather than force them to do something they couldn't afford to do of course the school but, districts are independent you might go see if you have a is there a school district i mean this was the milo appointment uh, uh -huh. point is there a school district that has decided to um, put a particular emphasis on technology related to this um, and uh, I don't know that it's AI exactly, but it's uh, uh, the, the technological point of, of uh, computers at this point um, that has it and would be interested in trying to uh, uh, do something in that area. Now, do you know, do we know where did my, how did Milo get? I mean, it was interested. How did Milo get selected? <laughs> uh, it was so distraughting. I was <laughs> you come here, right? Yeah, yeah. So it wasn't. Yeah, yeah. So it's very hard, Jill, to make out what you're saying. Uh, so can you do it again? Yes, I would like to be recognized, and there's a moment for me to speak. Oh, okay. You yes. Can that. yes, yes, I understand that exactly. Yes, go. I'm so I would like to say that we should also be discussing reframing the workforce and also educating people who have pre-existing low-paying jobs to have better jobs. Thank you. Okay. And, I, and that is, a, what happened here is that there were these three remaining subjects um, and one of them uh, was that because I put it on earlier, and uh, uh, when I when I said what they were, one of them was education, and John immediately picked up on it because he and Donna were interested, and he's been looking at it. Um, but we absolutely have to have a discussion um, I agree. on the labor and workforce side of it. And so, what I recommend to Brian is that. Um, as we get down in our time availability that at this next meeting at Tech Jam, uh, before, we're not at Tech Jam, Brian's going to find us a location so we're a little independent but can be nearby, um, that we have to cover that subject as well as the economic opportunity subject. I, I'm hoping that by that time, uh, on the education subject, John, We'll have gotten further, and it was burrowing into the Vermont <laughs> bureaucracy, and we'll find find uh, exactly where he needs to talk to and have a more concrete proposal. I agree with you, Joe. Yes. Just, just uh, I, I think in, possibly instead of hitting the Department of Education, um, it might be more uh, pertinent to have a task which would be um, it may be addressing by a different department guidelines for AI software developers that could eventually become a certification or whatever oh, down the road. But so that that might be more of a Where would that labor, be commerce? maybe a labor type. I don't know the government, but maybe like a, a labor yes. industry yes. commerce. It, it, to the extent it exists, it would probably be in commerce. The problem is exactly what um, uh, we heard earlier, which is, this is a very small agency. <laughs> the Department of Labor um, and the, actually the statewide, labor, the statewide Workforce Development Board, they are the, they're actually the body that's um, um, responsible for um, 
like training, certification, uh, industry recognized credentials, um, that type of thing. So if you're thinking of something like the credentialing or workforce, I would say that the, actually the Department of Labor, fun fact, is the state designated. Uh, okay, so it's labor, not commerce. Yeah. Okay, good. For workforce. John, are you willing to keep picking this up? I am definitely. I, okay. Uh, uh, we're now ten minutes over, so I, I, or, I'm I don't sorry, know. five minutes over, so I can't. Well, who? So, yes, I'll do that. Jill, are you driving the labor one? Or? I think. Say that again, Jill. Are you what? Are you going to drive? I I just offered to work with. Donna to drive the here's what we're going to do with education. Are you driving the here's what we're going to do positively with labor? I would be glad to. I don't know if we still fit in the subcommittee of ethics. No, uh, I don't. I don't no, think, I don't think you a, do. This I is think outside of ethics. How to, uh, to call the group together. Okay. Uh, I have only a limited amount, so what you should do, please, Jill, I'm asking you to do this, is send out an email to all members of the task force saying that you are forming a special subcommittee on labor uh, uh, and you want people, uh, uh, you should, of course, uh, CC to Ryan so he knows your recruitment effort and you want some help in formulating specific recommendations with respect to that subject uh, so that task force overall can start picking them up and looking at them in October. And once you get a group, then again with Ryan's help, you should go forward and have a meeting and try to develop some specific uh, recommendations so that we consider. And if you do, um, to the extent that I will certainly tell Brian if he's going to uh, be available, or if it's me, I will certainly give you time to present them at the October meeting. Okay? Okay. Thank you. Great. Uh, can we end on that for the moment? And we have much to do. <laughs> yeah. Much, much, much to do. Yeah, yeah, so we just want to do a motion to adjourn. So we can yes, which, yes, a motion. Jane's motion. No, I'm sorry. No, wait, I don't really adjourn. Right. Jane's Jane motion. Is there a second? Second. Second. Uh, just name somebody. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you all for coming and participating. Hopefully I shall shed my mantle over. Acting chair next time. This way.